see the way the president has taken this process. Absolutely. Trump is someone who we very rarely see in a defensive crouch. He is always sort of uh, going on offense. And I think that's what we saw really clearly last night when he was at a campaign rally, even as the gavel was falling on the impeachment vote. Essentially, uh, you know, at that campaign rally where he accused Democrats of, you know, once again engaging in a partisan witch hunt against him and suggested that this is going to amount to political suicide for Democrats in 2020. And indeed, the vote, as expected, broke down almost entirely on party lines. This opens up some pretty big questions for the Democrats in those vulnerable Trump districts who voted uh, with Speaker Pelosi and indeed for Speaker Pelosi herself and the strategy she's laid out when it comes to impeachment. It certainly does. And I think that, you know, the the, the dilemma or the, the troubles that Democrats could be facing now after this impeachment vote are exactly the reasons why Nancy Pelosi really didn't want to have this vote. It sort of was foisted upon her. She was looking to avoid it. There were calls from her most liberal members of her caucus even before Trump was inaugurated to look into the idea of impeachment. And she resisted it for a long time. But then the sort of center of gravity became overwhelming when these Ukraine revelations came out a few months ago that, you know, it became came sort of politically untenable for her not to pursue impeachment. But it was always a big gamble. And so now, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see how the chips fall. Yeah, and in in the the process of that, we're getting indications that Pelosi might uh, put the process itself on hold here, waiting to uh, name managers, even waiting to bring the articles of impeachment to the Senate floor. What's the calculus at play there? Well, the calculus, I think, is that, you know, as we know, the Senate's controlled by Republicans, and so Democrats don't have a lot of um, influence or leverage there. And so Democrats would like to see a different type of trial than the one they're likely to get from the Republicans that control the Senate. The Republicans that control the Senate are likely, it looks like their their plan is to sort of quickly allow the House to present its case, um, have a quick rebuttal, and then have a vote, because they know they have the votes to avoid a conviction. And so they're looking to dispense with this pretty quickly, and that is not really advantageous to Democrats. And so, um, at least not if they don't, if the Democrats don't get some of the terms that they're looking for. And so I think for Democrats, what they're trying to do is force, um, you know, use a little, use the leverage that they do have, which at this stage is really only only, um, you know, holding back the articles of impeachment so that the Senate can't trigger a trial um, in order to get some demands that they are making in terms of the trial met. Yeah, the uh, impeachment vote uh, sets the stage, uh, perhaps, for the next Democratic debate coming up tonight, 8 p.m. Wall Street time, live coverage on Bloomberg Radio. Does impeachment overshadow the entire exchange now? Well, this is, you know, the, this is the umpteenth, it seems like, Democratic yeah. debate that, that, that's happened this year. It's the last one of the year. And, you know, I think that impeachment is certainly the big story in Washington this week, you know. And I think impeachment in some ways has really overshadowed all of the 2020 campaigning. Uh, and I think the question going forward, uh, you know, as we move into January, there is likely to be a Senate trial. And then, you know, starting on, on February 3rd and early February, people are actually going to be voting beginning with the Iowa caucuses. So I think 2020 is going to kind of roar back the 2020 race is going to kind of roar back into the forefront, um, you know, but it might be the end of January, really, before that happens. So much happening in Washington. As we mentioned earlier, uh, Congressman Mark Meadows, Republican of North Carolina, just announced moments ago he will be resigning from Congress. A fascinating figure uh, to make this decision, given how closely tied, how strong an ally uh, he is with President Trump. He has been one of Trump's staunchest allies in Congress, and um, I think that he was particularly influential during the first two years of Trump's term when Republicans controlled the House. Um, I think it's probably a little bit less satisfying to serve as a, you know, conservative hardliner in a Republican minority, which may seem may, may help explain part of why he's, you know, making a different decision at this stage. But it also sounds as though he's hinting like he may have some kind of a role going forward. Um, perhaps in the administration or doing something else, you know, with uh, the president more directly. And uh, in our last 30 seconds or so here, should be noted there's been a fair amount of redistricting in North Carolina as well. Could that have played into the decision for him? It absolutely could have. Um, you know, there's uh, pockets of Western North Carolina that actually, um, you know, around Asheville and such that are actually more liberal. And so, um, you know, certainly, uh, you know, if he was looking at running in a different district in 2020, that could have had an effect on his thinking.
All right. Thanks, as always, Kate. Much appreciated. That's Bloomberg Washington reporter Kathleen Hunter. You can read more about all these stories on Bloomberg.com or on the Bloomberg Terminal. Follow all the latest on Bloomberg Radio in Washington at Bloomberg 99.1 and 105.7 FM HD2. And a reminder, we will have full coverage of the sixth Democratic presidential debate from Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles, 8 p.m. Wall Street time here on Bloomberg Radio. Karen. Nathan, thank you. It is 6.56 on Wall Street. It's time for the Bloomberg Green Report, and here's Jeff Bellinger. The International Chamber of Shipping wants to establish a non-governmental entity to help reduce carbon dioxide emissions. The chamber represents shipping companies around the world. The proposed International Maritime Research and Development Board would be overseen by members of the United Nations Maritime Agency. Shipping companies would provide funding through a mandatory contribution of $2 per metric ton of marine fuel. Environmental activists see the industry efforts as essential in combating climate change, even though it's estimated that shipping contributes only about 2% of global greenhouse gases. The International Chamber of Shipping sees the fuel contribution raising about $5 billion that can be used to speed research and development to help decarbonize the shipping sector and promote development of commercially viable zero-carbon ships. The proposal will be discussed when the International Maritime Organization's Environmental Protection Committee meets in London in March. That's the Bloomberg Green Business Report. I'm Jeff Bellinger. All right, Jeff, thank you. S&P futures, little change. So are NASDAQ futures and Dow futures are up 25. The DAX in Germany is down a third of a percent. Ten-year treasury down 7.30 seconds, yield 1.94%, and the yield on the two-year, 1.64%. NYMEX crude oil up tenth of a percent or seven cents at $61 a barrel. And COMEX gold, little change at 14.78.20 an ounce. Bloomberg surveillance is straight ahead with Tom Keen, Jonathan Farrell, and Lisa Abramowitz. For Nathan Hager, I'm I'm Karen Moscow, and this is Bloomberg. Influence our Christmas, a time for celebrating, unwrapping, and unwinding. Capture every moment with an epic iPhone 6S with a 12 megapixel camera. Now only $12.99 a month from Tesco Mobile, saving you £72. It's just one of the ways we're celebrating 100 years of great value. Go in store or search Tesco Mobile. Tesco Mobile. Every little helps. Saving £2 per month over 36 months was £14.99. 36 month credit and rolling monthly usage agreements required. Subject to status, terms apply. See tescomobile.com slash terms. This is not a commercial. This is a reminder. With TuneIn Premium, you could be listening to more music commercial free. Get over 45 commercial free music stations. Visit tunein.com slash premium to upgrade. When you're not listening to your team, take it to the end zone, the rim, or the net. Keep up with the biggest moments in sports by following TuneIn on social media. into the end zone for the touchdown. From reminders of the live top games to tips of the best sports stations and podcasts. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless. Follow and tune in on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to get the most out of TuneIn. 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is Bloomberg Radio. This is Bloomberg Surveillance Economics. I think the U.S. is going in for a couple years of very, very strong growth. The deficit by early in the next decade will start to become a real problem for the market. Finance. The consumer is really strong right now. We don't realize how good times are now. Investment. The biggest problem that people have in investing in stocks is that they get out of the market. It's not supposed to be easy. Anyone who finds it easy is stupid. Bloomberg Surveillance with Tom Keen and Jonathan Farrow on Bloomberg Radio. From a freezing New York City for our audience worldwide. Good morning, good morning. This is Bloomberg Surveillance. Coming up on the program, Treasury's lower the curve hitting the steepest levels of 2019. Sweden's central bank abandoning its experiment with negative interest rates. And Donald Trump becoming the third president in U.S. history to be impeached. From the Bloomberg Interactive Brokers Studio, hello Thursday. Here is your Thursday morning price action. Equity futures going absolutely nowhere on the S&P 500. Dead flat. 
at around about 3,200. The story in the bond market shaping up as follows. Yields coming up two or three basis points on a 10-year to 194 on a two-year note 164 and up a single basis point on the session. To give you a feel of G10, the dollar just a little bit weaker against the euro. Euro firmer by a little more than a tenth of 1%. Sterling gum by two tenths of 1%. Good morning to you all worldwide. The focus on a country with a population of 10 million and a GDP of 500 billion. It is Sweden abandoning its negative interest rate policy, Lisa. I love this story because it's about as radical as central bankers get this uh, this time of year. Uh, negative 0.25%. They kicked it up to zero and everybody's in awe. It's just amazing that they could actually go to zero from negative. And they're probably going to stay there for quite a while before anyone gets excited. It's not the beginning of anything. And I should also caution too, Sweden is very close to its inflation target of in and around 2% at around about 1.8%. But nobody thinks that its economy is exactly accelerating. They're not doing this because they're trying to stave off this radical inflation that, that seems to be uh, that seems to be taking off. It's just simply a, a statement that perhaps negative yields have been ineffective or actually harmful to the financial system. There will be some hope out there, I'm sure, that maybe the ECB will follow suit. I'm not sure how hopeful you should be. The Bank of England coming out with a decision moments ago, keeping interest rates unchanged. The vote 7-2 to two, as it was at the previous meeting as well. You remember in the previous meeting, Michael Saunders and Jonathan Haskell voting for an interest rate cut. A fascinating year ahead for this central bank, given the fact that some people out there expect cuts, some people out there expect hikes, other people expect the Bank of England do nothing. And I think if there is a consensus, it's around the idea that they wait until we get the budget and the fiscal budget in the coming months, Tom. You know, we'll have to see what they, they do as well. And Sweden, it's simple. I thought Raphael Lindbergh was brilliant, John. To me, it's much as anything about the Swiss National Bank. Switzerland flat out disagrees with what they're doing in Sweden. This is, there's a lot of underlying contention here, country to country, including the United Kingdom. The biggest defender of negative interest rates, the SMB, and why? Because they're way more concerned about the currency than anybody yeah. well, else. Flows. I mean, the, the wall of money. And folks, you have to go to Zurich. I mean, John, a number two value meal, McDonald's. Was it $20? It, no, it's like, seriously, $14. For, I mean, you go in, folks. Wait, this wait. is right down by... You Bonham actually Street. got a Happy Meal? No, we checked the price. No, okay. Happy Meal. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. Must, you. you must Thank not you have children. Check. Okay. Oh. The kids get the Happy Meal with the, the six-piece chicken McNugget, right? Hold on a second. Okay. He's trying to say he's populist because he bought his kid a Happy Meal in, in, in Switzerland. Let me in tell Zurich. you what. <laughs> there are, there are, there are, in Zurich Airport, there are about two places that you can get some food. There is a restaurant upstairs, and yeah. then downstairs there's a Burger King. So when you go past the Burger King, that's when you check in just to see how much the meal costs. So you check just in, to you get your actually update. buy it. Just to get your update. You, you, take, you take a look at it, you say, wow, that's expensive. You, you then go, you walk on. If you go down the street from Hermes, where the bow tie is literally $40 more than it is on Madison, Avenue here. I mean, I'm not kidding. The currency. Dynamics. I don't think you are. There is a McDonald's. Al from New Jersey once. He shared a lunch with me there, and you know he loaded up. He had like two Big Macs. It was like forty two dollars. You got in trouble. Yes. Yeah, this is it. You've Let's crossed the Rubicon. Can you bring this back? Yeah. SMB disagrees with what uh, they're doing in Sweden. We're going to continue this conversation now with Shahab Jalanous, Credit Suisse head of FX and Macro Trading Strategy. Shahab, Sweden abandoning negative interest rates. Can we read anything into this more broadly? for the other central banks in Europe continuing this experiment? Well, I think uh, this was well flagged, uh, so the immediate surprise effect isn't really there. But at the same time, we are seeing interest rates, uh, at least longer-term interest rates, going up uh, across the euro area at this moment, across Europe in general. Um, as equity markets do better, as the markets look forward to uh, a better bro growth prospect next year globally. So all it really does, I think, is underline the fact that uh, at this point, the market, if anything, is now looking for higher rather than lower rates across uh, the overall European rate space. Uh, and that's, that's probably the, uh, the most important aspect of this, I think. Job, you raise a really good point. We've reached the bottom, and now uh, the path is going to be up. That seems to be the implication. Is there a bigger message, though, to be read through uh, the idea that we did not see much of a move in markets? It wasn't this amazing, catastrophic event going to zero. Does that give us a lesson? Well, I think it tells you certainly that if you flag what you plan to do well enough in advance, um, and if it just so happens that global conditions are supportive of what you want to do at that point in time when you, when you reach that decision, uh, then you can get away with a move like this. Our uh, conditions? Notable, 
Uh, and it's notable as well, there were two dissenters to this decision. Uh, two of the deputy governors uh, disagreed. And what that does is it leaves some optionality to change course next year without losing too much face. Uh, so I think that's, that's another factor to bear in mind as well. Are conditions conducive to going to zero in Europe right now? I think it's, it's different in the case of uh, the ECB and, and the euro area, simply because inflation expectations uh, remain very muted at this point in time. And there are other significant risks. For example, uh, some fear that the tariff war, uh, the, as, as the U.S. tariff war against China subsides, perhaps one against the uh, euro area could start. So these kinds of risks probably mean that it's, it's too soon to think about uh, any, any form of um, movement away from negative rates by the ECB. I know Sweden's going to get a lot of attention today, and they may well do in the coming months too, but the ECB is forecasting inflation of 1.1% in 2020. Sweden and the Swedish Central Bank is forecasting inflation of 2020 of what? 1.8%? And Shahab, isn't that the difference for the ECB and the Riksbank? The Sweden is basically on the money on target and the ECB is nowhere near? I think that's, that's a key part of this. Uh, and ultimately, with the d various disagreements that are going on at the ECB, uh, apparently, between the different central bank governors, that adds uh, another layer of intrigue, I guess you could say, uh, to the decisions that the ECB is likely to make in 2020. But yes, until inflation expectations move materially higher, uh, it's quite difficult to see a move away from negative interest rates, especially as, as what we'll probably see if markets really get excited about rates moving higher in Europe persistently is a stronger euro uh, to boot, right. also tightens monetary conditions. That's, right where so I wanted that's to go. another thing that they need to avoid for now. That's right where I wanted to go. What is your call on euro? Euro. I mean, is it a tradable currency next year? Well, we actually think euro is still in the funding currency category. We, uh, we feel that uh, those looking for uh, a better global environment in 2020 uh, can look at other currencies that are more high beta uh, for uh, investment in, in, as opposed to the euro. Uh, so, for example, we think the high beta space in G10 includes the likes of uh, Norway, uh, yeah. the Australian dollar. Uh, and in emerging markets, there's a lot of choices as well, um, including, for example, yeah. the South African rand. So uh, the euro as a negative rate uh, currency is not the most appealing right. uh, to pick at this point. Well, so uh, Shahab Jalanus, thank you so much. Thanks, with, Shahab. Uh, Credit Suisse. Futures flat, down futures up 26. Bloomberg surveillance this morning, much by Adapar. Adapar's portfolio reporting and insights platform is trusted by thousands of wealth advisors from family offices, RIAs, and large financial institutions. Learn more at adapar.com, A-D-D-E-P-A-R, Adapar. Dot com. John, can I do a surveillance correction? Go on, go for it. I was flawed yesterday in my negative talk of FedEx. I was flawed. Surveillance correction. John Najarian emails in and says, what about Vet Bill's box from Chewy? That comes via FedEx. I saw that, yeah. I stand corrected. I checked at the bottom of my mat. Your yeah. Chewy comes from FedEx, it's too. Like, it's a walk-up. This is a walk-up up, up, you know, yeah. up the east side. Bear in mind, I used, to, I used to live there, too. <laughs> okay. And we both know it's they, not. They were adamant it was FedEx. I stand corrected. John walk Najarian. Up. Walk up to the 45th floor. Um, uh, so what about the uh, what about the toilet paper? Oh, no, we didn't get to that. Okay, we didn't review that with the six concierges at the bottom. That's handled in the back. Uh, I'm Lisa, so pleased. As well. We say good morning to John Nigerian and the Beast Dexter. Looking ahead to the week ahead and the next couple of days, the attention on central banks now. I can't think of a central bank where there is more confusion right now other than the Bank of England and what they're going to deliver you, you, well, in 2020. And, and who the new uh, governor will be is fascinating. There's also a lot of uncertainty about the underlying economy, right? I mean, how much certainty yeah. is going to pick up and, and whether we've actually clarified anything or this is just going to get dragged out. What's the economy feel like? It's going to have to get a whole lot better for this government you and they're the, going to have to do a whole lot more quite soon. Did you move consumption with a Burberry's item for Charlie? For no, baby I, Charlie? Don't, I don't think that I get to move the down on consumption. We're going to talk about the Bank of England decision in just a moment. The M PC saying that maybe limited gradual tightening might be needed at a time when two policymakers are voting for a rate cut. We'll talk about that next on Bloomberg Surveillance for our audience worldwide. Good morning to you all from New York City. This is Bloomberg Radio. Let's get the news now. We've got John Tucker here in New York. Yeah, and guys, the House of Representatives has impeached President Trump. We have done what we have set out to do. 
the House has acted on a very sad day to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. Madam Speaker Nancy Pelosi last night. So now what? Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says he'll announce the Senate trial date by the end of this week. He has indicated previously he'd like to start the trial shortly after the new year. Now, House Speaker Pelosi said after the House votes last night, she's holding back for now on taking a step that would initiate the trial. And when it comes to a Senate trial, the Constitution offers only 134 words of guidance. Global News, 24 hours a day on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm John Tucker, and this is Bloomberg Tom. Hey, John, thanks so much. What's changed in the last 24 hours? Yields higher, a little bit of curves steepening as well. That'll be one of our themes through this morning. Elite advisory firms rely on BNY Mellon's Pershing to meet the needs of their most complex clients. Karen Novak, Chief Operating Officer at Pershing Advisor Solutions, explains how. At BNY Mellon's Pershing, we bring customized insights and strategies to help you grow your advisory business and stay on the leading edge. We can support the needs of your most sophisticated clients with a full range of investment and wealth management solutions from access to private banking to consolidated bank and brokerage custody. Learn why so many of the largest advisory firms turn to us for the financial strength and high-touch service that BNY Mellon's Pershing can provide. Are you well positioned to stand out from your competition? Learn more at Pershing.com or call 800-445-4467. Brokerage custody provided by Pershing LLC and other services provided by Pershing Advisor Solutions LLC. Both members of FINRA and SIPC. Private banking and bank custody provided by BNY Mellon NA. Member FDIC. Message and data rates may apply. TNC and privacy terms can be found at bevel.com slash terms. Please don't text and drive. Have you wanted to speak a new language, but you thought it'd be too hard or take too much time? Then try Babbel for free by texting EXPLORE to 64000. In just 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to speaking a new language in just a few weeks. And right now, you can try Babbel for free. Babbel starts out teaching you words and phrases by matching them with pictures. You won't believe how easy the interactive program is. Soon the sentences get a little bigger, and before you know it, you're having simulated conversations voiced by native speakers. And because Babbel is crafted by language experts and uses the spaced repetition method in just 10 to 15 minutes a day, you'll be speaking the language of your choice with real confidence. With Babbel, you can speak a language. Just text EXPLORE to 64000 and start your first lesson in the language of your choice for free. Download the Babbel app or text EXPLORE to 64000 and try it for free. Text E-X-P-L-O-R-E to 64000. Hey y'all, Jeff Foxworthy here. Ah, Christmas. A time for celebrating, unwrapping, and unwinding. Capture every moment with an epic iPhone 6S with a 12 megapixel camera. Now only $12.99 a month from Tesco Mobile, saving you £72. It's just one of the ways we're celebrating 100 years of great value. Go in store or search Tesco Mobile. Tesco Mobile. Every little helps. Saving £2 per month over 36 months was £14.99. 36 month credit and rolling monthly usage agreements required. Subject to status, term supply. See tescomobile.com slash terms. This year, make Christmas shopping a pleasure. Come to Bista Village with over 160 beautiful boutiques set in a fairy tale Cotswolds Christmas garden, glittering by day and magically illuminated by night. After a day's hard work finding the perfect gifts, reward yourself with festive menus and cocktails at Farm Shop Restaurant and Cafe by Soho House and Co. or a delicious dinner at Cafe Wolseley. Bista Village, the perfect place for Christmas shopping. Ho, ho, ho! made a list this year. I want a new phone. One with amazing cameras, ultra-wide lens, of course, live focus video. Well, it has to be 5G ready to stream all my films. Can it come with something awesome to listen to them through? Darling, I think he was talking to the kids. Get everything you want and more. Purchase a Samsung 5G ready device and claim a pair of silver wireless Galaxy Buds at no extra cost. Shop our 5G handsets in store or online at your local O2 store or o2.co.uk. 18 plus. Offer excludes Galaxy Fold 5G. Purchase by the 25th of the 12th 19. Claim from Samsung within 30 days. T's and C's apply. Upgrade to TuneIn Premium and get over 45 commercial-free music stations. You'll also get live commercial-free news plus live play-by-play games from NFL, MLB, NBA, and NHL. Visit TuneIn.com slash premium to upgrade. The puck drops. 12 players face off to win. 
The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. Tune in brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to hockey when it matters most on TuneIn. Want to hear about the latest and greatest things to listen to on TuneIn? For reminders of the biggest live sports games, debates, and breaking news stories, follow at TuneIn on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay connected with the audio that matters to you. From Bloomberg Television, here's Taylor Riggs on Bloomberg Technology. Apple Wallet, Uber Money, Google checking accounts. It seems like everywhere you look, big tech is getting into the financial services game. So what's that trend doing to fintech? Enrique Dubagras is here to answer. He is the CEO of Brax. The company minted itself a unicorn this past summer with a valuation of $2.6 billion. Enrique, welcome to the program. And I wonder as you sort of take a look forward, given how big competition is, how competitive this space is, where do you see the next sectors in terms of the biggest opportunities? So I believe that there's a clear distinction between Um, distribution and actual innovation in financial services. I think a lot of the big tech companies, what they're doing is just creating new distribution channels for existing um, products. So, for example, um, you know, Amazon's credit card is issued by J.P. Morgan and American Express. And, you know, I truly believe that if there's no um, technology development in the back end, um, it won't change much. I think a lot of the opportunity are for both fintech firms and non-fintech firms that actually rebuild the technology behind it and don't use the technologies built by the bank. Hear more interviews like this one on Bloomberg Television, streaming live on Bloomberg.com and on the Bloomberg mobile app, or check your local cable listings. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. And I'm Karen Moscow at a 717 on Wall Street. On Bloomberg Daybreak is out on customer terminals, bringing you all the news you need to start your day. Let's get a check of the latest headlines with Hannah George at the Bloomberg Daybreak desk. Good morning, Hannah. Good morning, Karen. Nancy Pelosi is raising the stakes. The House Speaker won't name a prosecutor in the Senate impeachment trial until, quote, we see what the process is. President Trump spoke in Battle Creek, Michigan, as the House voted to impeach him. He spent more than two hours discussing his administration's achievements and said Democrats showed deep hatred and disdain for the American voter. The Bank of England was hacked. The central bank is asking regulators to investigate how high-speed traders were able to listen to audio of its press conferences before the official broadcast. And Sweden's central bank ditched negative rates after five years. The Riksbank hiked rates by 25 basis points to bring its benchmark to zero. For all the news you need to start your day, check out Daybreak on your mobile phone on the Bloomberg Anywhere app. Karen. All right, Hannah, thank you. S&P futures, a little change this morning. So are NASDAQ futures down, futures down, futures up 28. The 10 year Treasury down 7.30 seconds, yield 1.94%, and the yield on the two year 1.64%. NYMEX crude oil, a little change, up 5 cents at $60.98 a barrel. And COMEX gold, also a little change at $14.78.60 an ounce. The euro, 1.1126 against the dollar. British pound, 1.3097, and the yen, 109.47. And that's a blue. Bloomberg Business Flash. Bloomberg Opinion, informed perspectives, and expert data driven commentary on breaking news. Good morning, everyone. Bloomberg Surveillance. Lisa Bramo is John Farrow and Tom King. John, I know you're on the short list for Bank of England Governor. Oh, There's yeah. a few others yeah. as well. But May when is, when is Kevin Governor Walsh. Carney out? <laughs> Governor Carney, yeah, end when, of January. End of January. So we got some time. We got some time. Sterling, yeah. off the back of this decision, just slightly firmer than rolling over again. Cable, one thirty ninety five To join us on the Bank of England, I'm pleased to say, Marcus Ashworth, Bloomberg Opinion columnist. He joins us on the phone from London. Marcus, let's talk about the decision, and then we'll get into the theatre, the drama elsewhere too. The decision today, 7-2 to two, as it was in a previous decision as well, two voting for an interest rate cut. If there's one central bank where there is just a ton of confusion into 2020. Do they hike? Do they cut? Do they go nowhere? It's the Bank of England. Why, Marcus? Well, I think um, there was some expectation there might be one or two other of the governors, had, had, uh, sorry, of the members that would have, would have uh, gone with a potential of, of, a, of a cut next time. But it seems that they want to do as little as possible into uh, the end of Carney's reign. Uh, we may find out as soon as tomorrow who will replace him. Uh, 
Um, and then you know, 2020, as you say, is we'll have the Brexit bill going through and then a whole year of deciding whether or not there will be a trade deal and whether it will be a capable, uh, good enough one. Um, and that's very difficult for a central bank because the economy is pretty soft. In fact, again, the data today shows you there is enough reason, probably you can see why two of the of the nine have voted for a, a, a 25 basis point cut and may that may maybe join in the next uh, few months. We have a couple of uh, investment banks, Deutsche, Barclays, expecting a rate cut in January. That will be the last passing gift from Carney. I, I think that's probably too early. HSBC expects it in May, which is more logical to me because none of the big fiscal spending yeah. that the government's saying is going to come through okay. for at least another year. I'm taking over the show. Lisa Bramwich, John <laughs> Farrell, and Marcus Ashworth. Here's a question for all three of you oh, dear, for the next three minutes, that 32 unique? seconds. You taking over the show. What yeah. Marcus just said... It, we're, rates are rising. Curves are steepening now. What does that signal, John Farrow, you know, given this idea, this presumption of lower interest rates? Well, let's talk about it. it, Marcus. What do you see in the steepest curve, in the Treasury curve at least, twos out to tens for 2019? What's the signal there? Well, I mean, that's fine. I mean, the curves need to steepen. I mean, I can see why they're perhaps overdone it. We've had the Sweden cut, uh, sorry, hike 25 today, which, which people are worried about whether negative rates will last in Europe. I understand that the ebb and the flow of, of, of uh, why uh, the U.S. economy is in reasonable shape and the people are less worried about recession are guiding all global rates a little bit higher at the moment. But that does not mean that the U.S. UK economy does not have quite a lot of troubles uh, as it's had to suffer from uh, six, nine months worth of extra Brexit agony. Yeah. That's what's coming through now. So there is a reason for the hockey stick, which is a, a shortcut insurance cut like the Fed have done three times this year to be done for the Bank of England to then be able to indeed hike rates in 2021. And that, I think, is a possibility, not a probability. John Farrow, that was a masterclass in the pivot. Um, in other news, I will say uh, there is a question also, Marcus. Uh, a lot of people are expecting f uh, fiscal stimulus to take over for monetary stimulus in 2020. And there's a question of Bank of England and how they're going to handle what could be imminent, uh, given the fact that Boris Johnson has a, a quite a bit of support for some sort of fiscal stimulus. How do they respond to that? Well, that, they have a nightmare. You've got to feel sorry for them because, you know, when will this fiscal stimulus be? Terribly sorry in? for them. How big will it be? You know, they therefore want to do as little as possible. As I said, they might put an insurance rate uh, cut in, but if they can get away with doing nothing, they'd love to be able to, so they can stick with a long-held ambition over their three-year forecast period to be able to raise rates. Yeah. I think that's what they'll go to. Before we let Marcus go, I just need to get to the drama that I promised that we would get to with the Bank of England. So you know, Tom, there will be a news conference with Governor Carney, and with a news conference <laughs> with Governor Carney, some people get to stream it, other people watch it on TV, and apparently, Marcus, some people get it eight seconds earlier than everybody else. Yeah, I saw that. Marcus, yeah. what on earth has been happening at Bank of England news conferences? Well, I mean, they've had a real, real, much bigger problems with ECB, where it's been a, a much longer latency of uh, of up to sort of half a minute. Uh, and Draghi, as you knew, is much more, you know, important for the market uh, psychology to whether he's in, in the colour of his tie, let alone how he sort of expresses things. Carly's been less exciting as far as revealing which way interest rates may or may not go. But nonetheless, this is, should not be happening in our, in, our, in our modern markets. The ECB fixed it this year. You would have thought someone might have sent a memo to the Bank of England. And, but it's a, it's a classic oversight in an otherwise highly professional organization. It's ruined several people's Christmases, and they may not be working there, I suspect, much longer. Uh, but, you know, this shouldn't be happening in our modern day in any shape, form, or size. The Fed had similar, similar problems in 2012, as a yeah. ECB, you know, and now the Bank of England. A, a rare oversight, and let's hope it never really caused any actual yeah. uh, problems. Marcus Ashworth, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. And thank you for being with us last week when John and I uh, were in London. Writing for Bloomberg Opinion really can't say enough about his essays. The consistency is quite good. And every once in a while, he's just brilliant. He had one, I can't, I, you know, I'll be honest, i got to go back and look at what it was. You're about to say he had brilliant. one good article yeah, this that, year. That, 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 that was one great. that was just lights out. It was just completely, he completely one good article captured this year. Uh, the zeitgeist. How's yes, the Christmas yes, spirit many that are pretty good and then one yeah. that really, that actually you remember, how's, but I don't listen, remember it. How's How's the holiday spirit at home? Holiday spirit's great. It's so good. Yeah, last night um, we yeah. had a lot of holiday discussions. Yeah. Where, are I, you doing anything for the... Can I do a shout-out? I got myself Please for do. Christmas. I got a tombstone from Vermont Granite Works. Nice. Up in Vermont. You know what it says? I drink because of my children. This is Bloomberg.
This is a Bloomberg Market Minute. Embattled California utility PG&E needs Governor Gavin Newsom's support to exit the biggest utility bankruptcy in U.S. history by June 30th. But now a sticking point has emerged. A clause that would allow the state to take over PG&E if it fails to meet performance and safety metrics. The utility reached a settlements with wildfire victims and their insurers. Now Newsom's sign-off becomes the biggest obstacle to PG&E's efforts to get a restructuring deal done. The U.S. House today is set to vote on the U.S.-Mexico-Canada Free Trade Agreement. The Republican-led Senate, however, is not expected to take up that deal until next year. Nike reports quarterly earnings today. Bloomberg analysts say that company could deliver some solid results. They're forecasting 11% year-over-year profit growth, driven by momentum in China. Stocks remain at or near record highs following a mainly little change day on Wall Street. Gina Cervetti, Bloomberg Radio. Why has J.D. Power ranked Commonwealth Financial Network number one? in independent advisor satisfaction among financial investment firms for the sixth straight time? We think it comes down to one thing. You. Because it's your input and feedback that keeps us focused on what's most important to you and your clients and continually pushes us to be the best we can be. Maybe that's why we receive top marks in every category of the J.D. Power 2019 Advisor Satisfaction Survey. They named us number one in client support, number one in firm leadership, Number one in operational support. Number one in compensation. Number one in professional development support. And number one in technology support. Ready to partner with the best? Call Commonwealth at 866-462-3638 or visit Commonwealth.com and feel the power. Member FINRA SIPC, a registered investment advisor. For 2019 J.D. Power Award information, visit JDPower.com slash awards. 25 years ago, NJIT graduate... Tis the season to be hunched over your laptop. Not on our watch. In real life, you can fill your senses and your baskets. Feel all the sights, sounds, lols, and OMGs. Wear laughing emojis on actual smiley faces. Battery is running low. Take the kids to Santa's Grotto. In real life, you can find just the right present using the most advanced search engine in the world. Your eyes. We can't in real life. Brent Cross London. Free parking for all sleighs and cars. You know it's out there somewhere, but you just keep missing out. I'm talking about your dream job. Now it's easier to find and land your next role with the LinkedIn app. Build connections, keep in touch, and be the first to hear about new jobs. LinkedIn has more openings than applicants. And sometimes all it takes is one LinkedIn connection to land the job that's right for you. Don't miss out. Get your next big break and find the job meant for you. Download the free LinkedIn app today. Christmas is almost here, and at Asda, we've got your favourite spirits for just £16 each. That's £16 for a one-litre bottle of Smirnoff vodka or Gordon's gin, or a 70-centilitre bottle of Jack Daniel's whiskey. Looks like you're hosting this year. Asda, let's make Christmas extra special. Selected stores subject to availability exclude Scotland drink aware. Ho, 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 who's made a list this year? I want a new phone, one with amazing cameras, ultra-wide lens, of course, live focus video. Well, it has to be 5G ready to stream all my films. Can it come with something awesome to listen to them through? Darling, I think he was talking to the kids. Get everything you want and more. Purchase a Samsung 5G ready device and claim a pair of silver wireless Galaxy Buds at no extra cost. Shop our 5G handsets in store or online at your local O2 store or o2.co.uk. 18 plus. Offer excludes Galaxy Fold 5G. Purchased by the 25th of the 12th, 19. Claim from Samsung within 30 days. T's and C's apply. There's no way I'm sanding these floorboards by hand. Want to power through your timber projects? Head to the B&Q Tool Shop. Get hands-on in store with our wide range of electric sanders and planers, including the McAllister Random Orbit Sander, for just £30. The B&Q Tool Shop. You can do it when you're being q it. Introducing a new podcast, ESPN Daily. When you want to go beyond your feed, when you want to get inside the score, when you want to get behind the highlight, there's ESPN Daily. Go deeper into the stories of the moment. Get the exclusive access and insider perspective that only ESPN can give you. ESPN Daily, hosted by me, Mina Kimes. Listen and favorite ESPN Daily on TuneIn. Broadcasting live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio in New York. 
Bloomberg 1130. To Washington, D.C. Bloomberg 991. To Boston. Bloomberg 1061. To San Francisco. Bloomberg 960. To the country. Sirius XM Channel 119. And around the globe. The Bloomberg Business App and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Surveillance. From New York City, this is Bloomberg Surveillance for our audience worldwide. We're live on Bloomberg Radio. Two hours away from the opening bow, the news you need to know this hour. It's all about central banks today, beginning in the UK. The Bank of England keeping interest rates unchanged, with only two members of the central bank voting to ease policy. Officials say it's too early to tell whether the new clearer path for Brexit will improve sentiment. Elsewhere in Sweden, the Riksbank ending a half decade of sub-zero easing, raising its key interest rate out of negative territory. It now stands at 0%. And finally in Asia, the Bank of Japan leaving policy unchanged, but its statement points to a brighter economic outlook thanks to a government stimulus package and progress in US-China trade talks. Some of the stories we'll be talking about through the next couple of hours then right here on Bloomberg Radio. Time now for some headlines from elsewhere. Let's say good morning to John Tucker. Good morning, John. Yeah, Jonathan, Donald Trump will be the first to impeach US president to seek re-election in more than 150 years. He's betting that voters in key swing states will view his rebuke at the hands of the House Democrats as a rallying cry. At a rally in Battle Creek, Michigan, as the House voted to impeach him, he was met with chants of four more years. Thank you very much. So, that's it. We have the greatest country. We've turned around a ship. We need four more years. Recent national polls have shown weakening support for Trump's removal from office. And in states, including Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, data and interviews by Bloomberg suggest the picture is even brighter for Mr. Trump. Now that the president has been impeached, Democrats may hold back the impeachment articles to seek leverage over the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. They may want to force him to cave to demands to hear testimony from witnesses that President Trump barred from the investigation. Global News 24 hours a day on air and on quick take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm John Tucker, and this is Bloomberg. Jonathan. John Tucker, thank you, sir. It's time now for the Bloomberg NBC Sports Report. Here is John Stashauer. Jonathan Garrett Cole grew up in Southern California, attended UCLA, could have gone home. The Angels and Dodgers both wanted him, but the Yankees had an ace up their sleeve. Cole grew up a Yankee fan. He was captured in the stands of the 01 World Series as an 11-year-old, holding a sign that read, Yankee fan now and forever. Could have signed with the Yanks out of high school in 08. Did sign with them now as a high-priced free agent. I can remember as a little boy dreaming about being a Major League Baseball player, specifically a Yankee. And like Brian said, it's the right time and the right place to take that step. And I'm just tremendously excited. And I hope there's a lot of the young boys out there that chase their dreams just like I did. Cole brought that sign with him to the press conference. Devils in their first game since the big Taylor Hall trade skated past Anaheim 3-1 in Newark. St. John's' 10th win of the year, 85-57 over. For Albany, Stony Brook made a visit to the defending national champs and lost in Virginia 56-44. to The Knicks have hired former Cleveland coach David Blatt, not to coach but as a consultant to Knicks exec Steve Mills. They were teammates at Princeton. With the Bloomberg NBC Sports Update, I'm John Stashower. Jonathan? John Stash out there. Thank you. John with the sports. You've had the news. Let's get you some price action, shall we? Equity futures totally unchanged on the S&P 500. Yeah. Firmer by not even a point at 3,200. That's where in the bond market, steepest curve, twos out to tens that we've seen so far this year. That's spread right now, 30 basis points and up a single basis point on the session as well. In foreign exchange, just to give you a feel of things, the dollar weaker against the euro, euro dollar just firming up a little bit and sterling positive by a little more than a tenth of 1%. A big day for central bank decisions across Europe. We'll get you up to speed on that through the program from New York for our audience worldwide. This is Bloomberg Radio. From our world headquarters in New York, good morning everyone. John Farrow and Tom Keen. Lisa Abramowitz here wrapping up the holiday shopping as well. Futures up one, Dow futures up 27, the VIX 12.52 showing a little bit of that pullback that we've seen in the last 24 hours. The Bloomberg NJIT STEM report brought to you by New Jersey Institute of Technology designated an innovation and economic prosperity university for its economic engagement. More at njit.edu. Here's Nathan Hager. Tom, Jonathan, Lisa, good morning. Here's what's making news in science, technology, engineering, and math. NASA's effort to launch Americans into space without Ru Russia's help. 
faces a major test tomorrow morning. That is when Boeing has a test flight for its new CST-100 Starliner. The capsule is sitting atop an Atlas V rocket built by Boeing and Lockheed. It's due for liftoff from Cape Canaveral, Florida, 6.36 a.m. Eastern tomorrow morning. It'll dock with the International Space Station about 25 hours after that. Return to Earth a week from tomorrow. If all goes well, Boeing and NASA hope to have humans on it next year. An international team of astronomers may have found the food source for supermassive black holes. Researchers used the European Southern Observatory's Very Large Telescope to look at 31 quasars. Those are extremely bright centers of active galaxies. Twelve of them were surrounded by huge reservoirs of interstellar hydrogen gas. The study in the Astrophysical Journal suggests that would would have been the perfect food source for black holes to form rapidly about 12 billion years ago. And getting a little culture once in a while could add years to your life. That's what a new study from University College London suggests. It finds people over 50 who went to museums, concerts, or the theater every few months cut their risk of premature death by 31%. A study in the British Medical Journal says the link between arts engagement and longevity holds up even when you take wealth, education, and friendship status into account. That is today's Bloomberg NJIT STEM report. Tom, John, and Lisa. And Nathan, thanks so much. Five things you need to know to start your day. Brought to you by IBKR, the professional's gateway to the world's markets. Their clients enjoy lowest cost access to stocks, options, futures, forex, and fixed income from a single integrated account. Learn more at IBKR.com. Okay, we mentioned Sweden. I think we've sort of beaten to death, but it's really important. What's the why here? Why do I care about their courage to say enough on negative rates? It's a case study. If it works out and things still go okay in the economy, will the ECB follow? That's why people are interested in it. I would caution against some of this, though. The Swiss National Bank is still defending its negative interest rate policy. Sweden has some space to do this because inflation is at target. The ECB does and have the and same capacity. Yields higher, curve steeper. Is this the time, Lisa, within your reading, your research? Is this the time where finally yields go higher? The question here is why, right? And on one hand, you have the Federal Reserve, which is persistently going to keep rates low and is going to allow inflation to pick up more. But if you look at break-even rates, uh, they are ticking up, but not as much as the yield curve, which is the steepest of the year. But you are seeing inflation expectations starting uh, to not look dead. And, you know, this, and this is an interesting question. That'd be a great Great new show for you, John. The real break even. The real break even. That sounds Fridays, hot. Fridays at one o'clock. <laughs> Saturdays at one thirty. Saturdays at one a.m. Saturdays. Have the you want away in here? Have the listeners Thank suffered you. enough? <laughs> <laughs> Slightly. John, you had a great <laughs> no, actually, interview yeah. with Mohammed Alarian writing in the FT today, and you spoke to him uh, on your property at 9 a.m. I believe it was yesterday, the day before. Yeah, he's ri- he's writing a new edition. He is. to the only game in town. Yeah, I was actually just talking to him about it. So yeah. we're set to see this uh, next year. He said he's updating it for what he thinks is the ongoing final stage of this protracted experiment with unconventional. Policies. It's really interesting. So, looking forward to that coming out next year. Yeah, I mean, the unknown, unknown. And you wonder, Lisa, what's the unknown, unknown right now? Well, and inflation is a big one. And, John, I'm wondering from your perspective, given the guests that you have on the real yield, how concerned are they about inflation? We're talking about the open. It's one of his different properties. I understand that. Well, you do both. But, yeah, so we could talk about all your properties uh, as well as yours uh, in in, in work. Let me pick up on this, and I'll say the biggest difference this year, as far as I'm concerned, compared to years gone by, is typically a lot of people are looking for high yields and then they get lower ones. And this year, yeah. Citigroup looking for 125 year end in 2020. I believe Sockgen is looking for 120 on a US 10 yeah, year, yeah, year yeah, end 2020. Yeah, yeah. Just seems to be a little bit more bullish on treasuries in a way that it hasn't been in the past yeah. going into a new Price year. Price up, yield down. Yeah. Yeah, no At question. a time when you're actually seeing yeah. inflation expectations yeah. pick up a little. Tea leaves. I was, by, by chance, I was visiting Montrachet uh, looking for a beverage of my choice. This is the local liquor store, which I happened to wander into last Just night. Just happened, happened to stumble into I was now. talking, <laughs> stumble baby I was talking with Montrachet, who lightens my wallet. And, and Montrachet said, here's what you need to know. Every third phone call, price is up January 1st. And he says the tariffs with a vengeance are being passed on. It's, it's an interesting question. I'm not stating as fact. It's, you know, anecdotal. But you wonder, January 1, what happens to business? What did you buy? What did I buy? What did you buy? I, I had to, to improve the 
the cart the bar cart. there. Yeah. Yes. What, did you, what, did you, what did you improve the cart with? I, I, I attempted to acquire two scotches. Okay. One was peaty and the other was less peaty. Well, I, I mean, aside from aside from Scotch, I will say that there is sort of a question. Wait, wait, uh, they weren't for me. They were for Vet Bill. Of course, yeah. Vet Bill. I, the dog, chewy, dog the chewy box didn't have enough uh, dog Scotch. <laughs> they do. They have that Purina. They, it's great. Wait, seriously? I remember. Yeah. They have I dog scar- receiving, Scotch. I Purinos. received a picture from the Keen household a couple of Christmases ago, <laughs> and it was Tom decorating the Christmas tree <laughs> with one hand and a bottle of Scotch, a bottle, not a glass, <laughs> in, in, the, in the other hand. And Mrs. Keen sends me this picture. I think it was on a school day too. Right, it was. <laughs> we decorated the tree this year because I remember. I remember the Christmas that you left this seven foot tree in the corner of the living room with no decorations on for the whole month. I got, come on, there I was got, a bottle, an empty just bottle, a tree just on the so corner. <laughs> it's going to be divorce. I got the ugly Christmas lights on, and she wants the blinky blinky Martha yeah, yeah, Stewart yeah. designer ones. This is Bloomberg. Business is constantly evolving. Is your financial printer evolving to keep ahead of the curve? At Command Financial, we are redefining financial printing by providing industry-leading expertise, leveraging technology, and honing processes and best practices. Every day, Command helps SEC registrants, as well as members of their working groups, including securities attorneys and investment bankers, prepare, file, and disseminate regulatory and disclosure documents, such as registration statements, M&A documents, and mutual fund prospectuses and reports. Command provides a full range of services to help you effectively complete your deal, meet your disclosure requirements, and achieve your shareholder communications objectives. Visit our website at commandfinancial.com and learn how we're evolving, not only with the times, but also with your business requirements. Command Financial, redefining financial printing. Imagine. Imagine being denied an apartment because of your religion, or your race, or because you have children, or a disability. It's so wrong. Yes, but who has the power to stop this? You do. Each of us has the power. The law is on your side. It's illegal for landlords to discriminate because of race, color, religion, sex, national origin, disability, or familial status. If you suspect that you have experienced housing discrimination, file a complaint with HUD immediately so we can investigate it. Fair housing is your right. Use it. To learn more, visit HUD.gov slash fair housing. That's HUD.gov slash fair housing. Or call 1-800-669-9777. 1-800-669-9777. A public service message from HUD in partnership with the National Fair Housing Alliance. With the Bloomberg Business of Sports Report, I'm Mike. I used to be a bit of a rubbish sleeper. I'd toss and turn all night. And somehow, I could never find the comfy bit of the mattress. <laughs> it was a proper nightmare. That's what brought me here. Testing mattresses in the Witch Test Lab. We use a custom-made barrel rolling machine to simulate a decade's worth of use. And the mattresses that perform best are the only ones we recommend for your bedroom. Witch tests harder so you can buy smarter. Visit witch.co.uk. Ah, Christmas. A time for celebrating, unwrapping and unwinding. Capture every moment with an epic iPhone 6S with a 12 megapixel camera. Now only $12.99 a month from Tesco Mobile, saving you £72. It's just one of the ways we're celebrating 100 years of great value. Go in store or search Tesco Mobile. Tesco Mobile. Every little helps. Saving £2 per month over 36 months was £14.99. 36 month credit and rolling monthly usage agreements required. Subject to status, terms apply. See tescomobile.com slash terms. Spend Christmas Day listening to the NBA on TuneIn Premium. Featuring five big matchups on the holiday schedule. Unwrap the action starting at 12 Eastern when the Celtics take on the Raptors in Toronto. Followed by the Bucks and the 76ers at 2.30. The holiday cheers continue with the Rockets and Warriors at 5 and the Clippers and Lakers at 8. And a showdown between the Pelicans and Nuggets at 10.30. Tis the season with the NBA on TuneIn Premium. Upgrade today. Want TuneIn to remind you when the big NFL game is about to get underway? Be sure notifications are allowed on your phone and search NFL on the TuneIn app. Find the game you want to hear under events and tap Notify Me. We'll let you know exactly when it's time to listen in for kickoff. 
Hey, NFL fan, can't watch the game? Can't be there? We've got you covered. With TuneIn Premium, you can listen to every NFL game live as it's happening. Sean McCoy has an opening on the right side, punches into the end zone for the touchdown. Or catch it later on demand. Offset backs behind Mahomes. The give is to Williams, starts right, cuts it back to the left, and blows into the end zone for the touchdown. You call the plays. Follow the NFL anytime, anywhere, all season long with TuneIn Premium. Upgrade today. MSNBC is on TuneIn. Get up-to-the-minute coverage on news and events from around the world with MSNBC's live 24-7 station on TuneIn. At home or on the go, stay up to date on the latest news and political trends with MSNBC's full lineup of shows, including Hardball with Chris Matthews. Hi, I'm Chris Matthews. Thanks for listening to MSNBC on TuneIn. And The Rachel Maddow Show. Plus, when news breaks, MSNBC has you covered with live updates, expert analysis, and more. Search MSNBC on TuneIn today. 2,700 journalists and analysts in over 120 countries. This is Bloomberg Radio. Now, a global news update. President Trump now carries the indelible label of impeachment after the Democratic-led House passed two articles of impeachment last evening. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi hasn't said when she'll refer the articles to the Senate, with many in her caucus hoping Senate Leader Mitch McConnell will give in to pressure for a real trial. House Judiciary Chairman Adam Schiff. The American people want to hear from people like John Bolton. The American people want to hear from people like Mick Mulvaney. The American people want to see what's in those documents that the president has been hiding at the State Department, in the Office of Management and Budget, in the White House itself. North Carolina Republican Mark Meadows, a top Trump ally, says he's leaving the House at the end of this term. Queen Elizabeth formally opening up a new session of Parliament today, her speech giving the first details of what Prime Minister Boris Johnson plans to do about Brexit with his commanding new majority. Russian President Vladimir Putin is warning about global warming, saying it's a threat to his country. Putin saying Russia has abided by the Paris Agreement to slow the planet's warming. I'm Michael T. You can't be the only one who spends time examining angles. This deal, what would it look like? You're right. The others are here. Is he doing a good job, you think? Bloomberg Markets, weekday mornings at 10 Eastern on Bloomberg Radio. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. And I'm Karen Moscow. We are watching some earnings this morning with Rite Aid up 22% in early trading after third quarter profit and its outlook for the year beat analyst estimates. ConAgra up 7.5% after its third quarter profit beat the highest estimate of analysts we surveyed. And Darden Restaurants moving lower down 3.7% after the company reported comp sales at Olive Garden missed in the second quarter. Government bonds falling around the world as a string of central banks either kept their benchmark interest rates steady or raised them. U.S. stock index futures are Little changed along with shares in Europe, leaving equities and major markets lingering close to record highs. We check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day on Bloomberg. S&P futures, they're down about two points. Dow futures up 10. NASDAQ futures down six. The DAX in Germany is down half percent. Ten-year treasury down 8.30 seconds, yield 1.94 percent. And the yield on the two-year, 1.64 percent. NYMEX crude oil is little changed, up less than a tenth of a percent or five cents at $60.98 a barrel. Comex gold little changed at 1478.40 an ounce. The euro, 1.1115 against the dollar. British pound, 1.3081. Both little changed against the dollar. The yen, 109.49. And that's a Bloomberg business flash. Tom, John, and Lisa. Karen, thank you so much. There are points where it is sobering. Last night, about 8 p.m., uh, the youngest afterthought wandered into uh, the room and said, is the president going to have to leave his job? I mean, she was confused about impeachment and all that. And it speaks to the scale, the scope of What'd the moment. Whatever. What did I say? No, I explained some of the process to her. And I think she got to the idea that we wouldn't be without a president, uh, uh, which was, was good. Greg Villiers is a student of all this, from Johnson to Clinton to uh, President Trump. And he joins us right now. To me, Greg, there was an entire somber tone to the process. Am I wrong on that? Or did that capture what you observed yesterday in Washington? Washington. No, you're right, Tom. Good morning. I think that Pelosi wanted to show the country that they were not jubilant, and she cut off any celebration very quickly. I thought that was pretty astute of her. She is going to delay. This is something that I guess came out of nowhere. Uh, does she have the ability to delay the process to the Senate? 
apparently, and I think that's the big deal. I think that's the story coming out of last night, which was so predictable, except for this new angle, and that is she may delay for weeks uh, any uh, submission of impeachment charges to the Senate until they show her that they're going to have witnesses. Craig, I'm wondering, uh, going forward, what the political consequences of this vote will be, given the fact uh, that President Trump is using it to try to ignite his base. Will that be effective? Well, it sure was at that rally he had last night in, uh, I think it was Wisconsin. I mean, a very raucous, uh, adoring crowd. So he's ginned up his base. You know, whether he's ginned up that great chunk of centrist voters, that 35, 40 percent of the people in America who could be swayed, that the jury's still very much out on that. But I, I do think he's united the Republicans more than he could have ever hoped for. Yeah, that rally in Battle Creek, uh, Michigan, I believe. I'm just yep. trying to understand the Republican Party how we can sort of separate it out from President Trump. I mean, is uh, the Republican Party at this point uh, the Trump Party and that essentially anything that is, uh, you know, a rebuke of him will be used to try to get a uh, voter voter turnout? Well, you're right, Lisa. I think that it's now his party entirely. He's dominated the party, terrorized the party. And I think what they also own is a 3.5 percent unemployment rate. And I think that's a big plus. Greg, the president yesterday at that campaign rally referred to the process as, quote, a political suicide march for the Democratic Party. How's it playing out in the polls in a moment, Greg? Yeah, I mean, the polls, John, have, have slightly weakened for impeachment, but Trump said the last week that his poll numbers have gone through the roof, which typically for Trump is not true. Uh, I think his poll numbers have improved a bit, uh, but there's more to come. I, mean, I think there's more twists and turns, like Pelosi withholding the impeachment charges going to the Senate. You know, maybe we will hear from John Bolton. Maybe we'll hear from Rudy Giuliani. Maybe Trump himself will continue to be his own worst enemy on, on uh, things like letters to Pelosi. So there's more twists and turns to come, but the bottom line is still Trump will remain as president. The Democrats say they're upholding the Constitution. This isn't about electoral politics, but it will have consequences for 2020. And a conversation we've been having on this program, Greg, is essentially that the president is already conducting a national campaign at a time when the Democrats are still in the business of selecting their nominee for the campaign next year. They are focusing on the smaller states ahead of all of that, and they're drowning in partisan politics down in Washington, D.C. Just how much can the president leverage this moment to put himself on a firmer footing into next year? Well, I think he can. And as, as you guys all know, I try to be a centrist. I'm not an ideologue on one side or another. But I must say, it's a pretty sorry group of Democrats. I mean, they debate tonight, and I'm sure they're going to go after each other pretty aggressively. I mean, there's no one in the group that I see who, who clearly uh, could beat Trump. I mean, it's possible Trump could lose. I think the Electoral College map doesn't favor yeah. him as much. But, uh, boy, that's a weak group of Democrats he's facing. We should mention as well that Michael Bloomberg is the founder of Bloomberg LP and, of course, of Bloomberg Television and Bloomberg Radio and is a candidate for that Democratic uh, nomination. That speaks, Greg Vallier, to a recalibration into the weeks of 2020 of what moderate means to Democrats. Senator Warren has shifted. There's imperceptible changes. What's a moderate Democrat look as we launch into the holiday season? Well, there's three or four big ones. As you mentioned, Bloomberg, there's Biden, there's Amy Klobuchar, there's Buttigieg, who are all relatively moderate for that party. But Trump, I think, would try to demonize any of them, saying that oh, they I all know favor... That. Yeah, yeah, but he'll say they all favor big tax increases. They're all, you know, closet socialists. So, I mean, he'll still have an argument. But I think right now, this crazy primary season which right. rewards pandering in Iowa to the most extreme elements may reward, oh. believe it or not, Bernie Sanders, uh, who is, I think, had a little surge. I think Sanders could win New Hampshire, as he did easily four years ago. I mean, Greg, this is really important, and you're a real student of this. For, for those of us that are clueless, that would be me included, how how different is this process to March 3rd than the last time around? Well, there's one very big difference, and that is a, a major candidate, Mike Bloomberg, 
is not contesting the early primaries. He's saving his uh, powder. I mean, his ads have been quite good, in my opinion. I think he could do well on March 3rd. So I don't want to diminish Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, South Carolina, but they're not yeah. quite as important as they were four years ago. Greg, you're killing me. Every time you mention Mr. Bloomberg, you know, I'm... I'm, you know, I'm He's a, you're actually killing him. He's actually... You've got to say the disclaimer. I'm Asian right here. We should mention again, folks, Mr. Bloomberg's affiliation with Bloomberg Surveillance. Lisa. Greg, I'm curious about what the playbook is post, uh, post-election, post right? I mean, I was talking with one, uh, one investor who was saying that perhaps we'll start talking about an infrastructure bill again uh, come next December. Is that plausible? Do you think that we're actually going to see any feasible proposals uh, like that on the table? Well, they'll talk about it. I mean, they'll talk about tax cuts, too. I think Trump will talk about big middle-class tax reductions, which I don't see getting past Pelosi. I don't see an infrastructure bill passing either. But I think Trump will make it clear that he's willing to spend money. If there's one big economic theme in this city, it's not the, the monetary stimulus. It's the fiscal stimulus, which I think will continue to be very, very robust. Well, you know, I want to go, I, I, Greg, to some of the challenges that are out there in infrastructure. Like in Merrimack, New Hampshire, built in 1959, I-89 over South Street. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's your neck of the woods. Why is it so hard to fix I-89 overpass in Merrimack, New Hampshire? Well, the first reason is that they have to figure out a way to pay for it. And nobody, of course, would dare. Well, you know, no one in New Hampshire wants to pay for it, but it's like yeah. federal, right? Yeah, but even on the federal level, no one wants a gasoline tax, which could pay for it. But it'll come. And I guarantee you guys, as we go through 2020, Trump will talk okay, a lot about infrastructure. Very quickly here, Greg, we built the inter- the, the interstate yep. system. You're too young to remember this, but we built the interstate system under Eisenhower. Sure. And I think that Trump would love to do something similar. Also, a wild card, guys, student debt relief. I think a proposal is coming. There's a piece this morning in the Wall Street Journal. They're not going to forgive it, but they might restructure debt. That's going to be a plus for them. Greg, great to catch up with you. Greg Van Lier, there, Greg, AGF oh, yeah, Investments you. Chief, U.S. Policy Strategist. I'm just trying to digest the, the tuition payments. In politics. Yeah, well, Somebody's going to forgive the tuition payments. I, I actually think that would be huge. That would be huge economically because a lot of people say that that's one thing that's been holding back uh, housing <clears throat> formation among younger right. people as well as just spending it's in general. a huge deal. It's a huge, it cuts many different ways. But I wonder if there is deal. relief, genuine relief, how much that would actually improve yeah. spending and inflation. When does this start to pop on the market radar for market participants? Spring into summer? I mean the fiscal idea? Second quarter. The, the situation Second with quarter. the political race going into the election a lot of people, 2020. I, I think it's a tough call, John. It's very different than the United Kingdom where we're like with the Queen's speech today, boom, boom, boom. There's get through the it, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Well, a lot it's of people, like I was speaking with one banker who was saying that a lot of middle market deals are getting lined up for the first quarter. And the reason why is because they're all trying to get ahead of the election. First quarter is going to be very active. People expect a rally. And then after that, people expect things to kind of soften up and get a lot more rocky See, because that's when you start to heard get... that from Credit Suisse. Yeah. So that's yeah. when you start to get more concerned about the election. John, they're in such a rarefied place. I was speaking with a banker too and he said if I put another $142 in my savings account I'd get a toaster there you go oh that's no if you pay $140 for a happy meal in Zurich yeah, for, you get a for, toaster. for afterthought you get a toaster it's, it's a fancy you know, dur- you know equity futures down a tenth of 1% you okay over there John it's an American good, talk John I'm good I'm good from New York this is Bloomberg Surveillance on Bloomberg Radio this is a Bloomberg market. Hey, NFL fan, can't watch the game? Can't be there? We've got you covered. With TuneIn Premium, you can listen to every NFL game live as it's happening. Sean McCoy has an opening on the right side, punches into the end zone for the touchdown. Or catch it later on demand. Offset backs behind Mahomes. The give is to Williams. Starts right, cuts it back to the left, and blows into the end zone for the touchdown. You call the plays. Follow the NFL anytime, anywhere, all season long with TuneIn Premium. Upgrade today. Along the goal line, Gordon scores! He takes it home! Hockey fans, the 2019-20 NHL season is here. Here's Petrangelo, he scores! And you can hear the action live on TuneIn Premium.
premium. From regular season action to the All-Star game and through the Stanley Cup in June. Hear the home and away call for every game for every team live. At home or on the go, never miss a game with the NHL on TuneIn Premium. Upgrade today. At Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is Bloomberg Radio. This is Bloomberg Surveillance Economics. American economic power and future depends on trade deals. In many of these countries, we're still seeing people struggling. Finance. We're in this vortex of uncertainty. These big companies, they just sometimes lack focus. Investment. The markets have become a little bit too addicted to the Fed. Timing the market is just so difficult. Bloomberg Surveillance with Tom Keen and Jonathan Farrow on Bloomberg Radio. Good morning, everyone. John Farrow and Tom Keen. Bloomberg Surveillance. Surveillance markets churning, everyone noting yields higher, curves steeper, a lot going on in central banks. John's been all over that. This morning, Lisa Abramowitz here as well. We welcome all of you on a Thursday before the holiday season. I, I mean, did you see the snow thingy come in last night? Boom. The snow squall. The snow squall. Is that you know, squall? I, I'd yeah. never heard of it until yesterday. Neither had I. What is a squall and why did it become so popular yesterday? It's just a, a sort of rush of snow and wind that gusts in and just oh, as it gusts uh, in. Oh, weather correspondent is in the building. <laughs> here now. Well, it would have to do with the uh, drop in the barometric pressure by uh, 30 millibars. Cool. You're making this up. Well, Lula, I honestly... It's, it's, like like a shower. <laughs> it's like a shower, but with snow. Speaking, How about that? Speaking of bars, I miss, I miss oh. the squall. <laughs> it was in a bar. I was saying, I was I wondering if all the meteorologists are just making it up. <laughs> that was no. pretty good. No. I like, <laughs> like they don't? I, I, I missed it, and we saw it in boom. It was I like, will say, just as it came in, my older son said, Mom, can you go to the store? I really want a stir fry. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's it's seamless is how you spell that. You, <laughs> you get the number two value meal and large fries. Seamless. <laughs> Should I bring in Cameron sure. Christ? No. Well, first, let's do some business. If we could, as oh, well. we do some go business, on, please. On. We're the one of our best contributors to all we do here at Bloomberg Surveillance. And we say, this morning we're brought to you by Cone Resnick. Planning a transaction, turn your tax strategy into a competitive advantage. To learn how, visit Cone Resnick's Capital Markets Tax Resource Center at ConeResnick.com slash tax insight. When we have a snow squall, we spell it C-O-H-N-R-E-Z-N-I-C-K. ConeResnick.com slash tax insight. We thank Cone Resnick for their commitment to what we do this year. Cameron is the one to talk to right now. He is. Let's bring him right now. Cameron Christ, Bloomberg News, macro man. Macro man Cameron Christ of Bloomberg. Matt Cameron, great to have you with us. The year of 2020, what won't happen next year. What are you looking for, Cameron? Well, uh, the thing that I write says what won't happen. Uh, we call it a gimmick or something. Um, uh, I'm already looking pretty good because I said that the yield curve wouldn't reinvert. And twos, tens is, I think, steep in seven basis points since I pressed send on my piece so uh, uh well i'd like to claim credit that i've single-handedly moved the treasury market uh that's probably uh a little uh all right a little a little a little false or a lot false yeah um right uh, yeah but i think the the um, you know the underlying story though is that the, uh, the the pressure on the curve is is to steepen um i've got a model that says uh two cents should be about 50 basis points and when you think about it, it sort of makes sense. The the Fed has basically told you that rates aren't moving, barring some massive change in circumstance for pretty much the next year, yeah. I think we can conclude. Uh, and in an environment uh, of better news on the trade front, arguably on the Brexit front, stocks at all-time highs, people looking for a rebound in growth, that should naturally put a little bit of upward pressure on uh, on the back end of the curve, uh, on, on interest rates. So you you have sort of a natural um, natural pressure to steep, and kind of kind of makes sense. Karen, there's a question though, sort of embedded in this: How much does this stem from actual inflation, and how much does this stem from uh, perhaps just a, a a more technical factor here of perhaps ten year yields having gotten too low? And I ask this because I'm looking at break even rates, and they are actually uh, yes, they're up, but they're not up nearly as much as you're seeing uh, with respect to the yield curve uh, and, and its steepening. So, is this an inflation play, or is this just sort of a normalization? I think it's normalization. I mean, arguably, inflation is a curve flattener um, because that would that would imply that uh, that the Fed should put rates up. 
Um, I, uh, my framework suggests that the tens should be around two uh, 2.05 percent. Um, so that's 10 basis points above where we are now. Um, the cash market has traded below my model estimate for three or four months now. Um, so I, I think you have seen this sort of rush to safety, as, as, yeah. as it were, um, given all the uncertainties that have been manifest right. in the world. And as those uncertainties have receded, it's sort of natural to let a little bit of steam out of the yeah. income balloon. Cameron, how do you respond? John Farrell brought this up, I thought, brilliantly earlier. How do you respond to the many houses that have a vector to lower interest rates? It can be this vector, that vector, the other vector. But the fact is a lot of people are framing in a tendency to lower interest rates. What's that signal into any given new year? Well, I, I think it probably tells you that, you know, that they're, they're kind of listening to the Fed in, in the sense that um, the Fed speak has indicated that risks are, they may have receded, but they still reside um, to, to, to the downside. And in his last press conference, Jay Powell seemed to go out of his way to um, downplay the prospects of uh, taking back the insurance, um, kind of suggesting that the, the, the inflation bar um, for doing so is, is higher than just 2%. Um, and that's, you know, let me, let's, let's face it, uh, next year is an election year. Yeah. And if the, Fed, if the Fed hikes rates, Donald Trump might frog march from 1600 right. Pennsylvania Avenue to the Eccles Building and single-handedly, yeah. you know, fire Jay, yeah. Jay Powell in person uh, or try to, right? Yeah. So, I mean, the Fed would say that they're independent, but, you know, I think we right. know that they kind of leaving rates on hold and keeping their head down is 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 probably an expedient policy. Cameron, thank you so much. Cameron Christ with us uh, here with Bloomberg. And Cameron, thank you so much for that case in Narragansett Lager Beer. I really like to thank you <laughs> for the holiday greetings there. Did you actually have it or did you just focus on the scotch? No, no, no. I, I can switch back and forth. You know, it's like a black <laughs> yeah, but, kind of thing. You okay over there? Yeah, just getting some breaking news on Goldman Sachs. I yeah. saw that. In yeah. talks to admit guilt in the 1MDB probe. This coming from Dow Jones, the Wall Street Journal. Is this Journal. a surprise? They write the following. Goldman Sachs, in talks with the U.S. government to pay a multi-billion dollar fine admit guilt and agree to ongoing oversight of its compliance procedures in order to resolve a criminal investigation into its role in the Malaysian corruption scandal. The stock down in early trade by just a couple of tens of And what's important here is this is with the United States and doesn't speak to the uproar in Malaysia. Yeah. Which, you know. The other thing that's interesting is normally uh, there could be a settlement, but not the admission of guilt. And the admission of guilt is actually uh, different than a lot of the settlements that you get with the Department well, of Justice by banks. Let's, let's, let's take a minute here or so. This is like a Chanel Bassett kind of thing we talk about. But what's the tone for it for Goldman Sachs? I mean, I'm going to go back, John Farrell, a couple of weeks where they basically said we're going to underplay these retail experiments we're doing. Well, there was some reporting over whether they would step back from some of the revenue targets over the next couple of years. And then ultimately we're waiting for Goldman Sachs to lay out everything, I think, in January. So next month, waiting to get some numbers around that. You I mentioned Malaysia. You mentioned the settlement yeah. around Malaysia. The Wall Street Journal going on to write the following. The settlement wouldn't resolve an investigation by authorities in Malaysia, which is seeking billions of dollars from Goldman. It couldn't be determined whether other U.S. regulators would join the settlement or pursue their own. A Goldman spokeswoman speaking to Dow Jones saying the following. Resolution discussions are ongoing. It is irresponsible to speculate on an outcome. So unclear at this point. Uh, this does sort of underscore a certain question about the identity of Goldman Sachs, right? Because we did see them as the big trading house for years and years and now they're trying to shift and they were trying to be a consumer it's bank and they haven't uh, that hasn't panned out to the same degree now they're going back to the bread and butter but you know there is a question yeah. especially with this overhang what that's going to look like I, I, I think it's to me it's a, it's a bit of a mystery into uh, the year can I, can I do a surveillance correction we're scrupulous here when we mess up this is the second one the, well, in about an hour and I was going to say the second one in 10 minutes doing pretty good. <laughs> we're doing pretty good John Tucker help me out here yes, Jay sir. a careful listener from from Concord, New Hampshire, goes, hey, dummy, we we're talking about bridges in New Hampshire. He says, I-89 starts in Bow. <laughs> and, you know, you go up to Bow, you go north through through Manchester, yeah. and there's that sign as you turn left on I-89. Oh, yeah, it says Wobbly Barn, 98 miles. Uh, we're talking about the ski areas up there? Yeah, you know, you go up to Bow, and, the, you know, there's a sign for the Wobbly Barn. The Wobbly Barn, Wobbly barn Kilton, where you, Tom Keene... Um, for the uninitiated, used to play years ago. I used to, I used to have a beverage there every once in a while. You know, 
you know. His I, picture I, is still on the wall. If you're, if you're headed to Killington, no, the picture the was on the road. table. <laughs> I don't know about you, John, but I'm actually reading uh, this this uh, report by Alberto Gallo uh, by Algebras Investments. You're not listening to our surveillance correction on the roads of New Hampshire? It's, it's really busy. interesting because What's he's Alberto talking Gallo about saying? how central banks uh, have basically been the, the primary driver of markets over the past Absolutely. 10 years. And it's going to basically shift to governments and how you know, the potential consequence uh, of fiscal uh, stimulus could be central bank independence. You buy it, John? Well, congratulations to Alberto Gallo for his performance through 2019. Did a credit Crushed fund, it. I think, is up around about 24% yeah. uh, for the year. So credit's had a... Really done pretty and, and well I over talked to him about how he did that and it's fascinating. It's what did not he say? So, he, it's not what he did. It's what he didn't do. That's such an important concept. Energy it's, bonds? I, I don't can't remember the details. It was a blur. But it's, again, it's what he didn't do that gives you that because, John, what would be the normal performance there? 24 percent. Everybody else is doing 12? Well, the index, I think corporate credit in the United States, say, returning around about 15 percent this year. Yeah, so he beat it by 900 billion. Basis points. He's buying drinks. Alberta Gallo for the Ubers uh, this morning. Mixed market. We've got red. We've got green on the screen. This is Bloomberg. And now for the news from New York City. Here is John Sacco. And John, House Democrats Adam Schiff and Calo of California Judiciary Chairman Jerry Nadler likely to take leading roles presenting the House impeachment case to the Senate. But House Speaker Nancy Pelosi will designate other Democrats to play very parts of the House impeachment team uh, during the impeachment of President Clinton in 1998. Thirteen Republicans from the House Judiciary Committee were appointed as impeachment managers. A winnowed field of Democratic contenders is set to take the debate stage for the sixth and final time in 2019. Tonight, the candidates will seek to convince anxious voters that they're the party's best hope to deny President Trump a second term. And Bloomberg Radio will carry tonight's debate live, followed by debate analysis with Kevin Cirilli on Sound On. Global News 24 hours a day on the air in a quick take by Bloomberg Power by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts of more than 120 countries. I'm John Tucker. This is Bloomberg Tom. And Jen Tucker, thanks so much. I'm on the 2% watch. 10-year yield, 1.95%. Stay with us. This is Bloomberg. Message and data rates may apply. TNC and privacy terms can be found at bevel.com slash terms. Please don't text and drive. Have you wanted to speak a new language, but you thought it'd be too hard or take too much time? Then try Babbel for free by texting EXPLORE to 64000. In just 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to speaking a new language in just a few weeks. And right now, you can try Babbel for free. Babbel starts out teaching you words and phrases by matching them with pictures. You won't believe how easy the interactive program is. Soon the sentences get a little bigger, and before you know it, you're having simulated conversations voiced by native speakers. And because Babbel is crafted by language experts and uses the spaced repetition method in just 10 to 15 minutes a day, you'll be speaking the language of your choice with real confidence. With Babbel, you can speak a language. Just text EXPLORE to 64000 and start your first lesson in the language of your choice for free. Download the Babbel app or text EXPLORE to 64000 and try it for free. Text E-X-P-L-O-R-E to 64000. Why has J.D. Power ranked Commonwealth Financial Network number one in independent advisor satisfaction among financial investment firms for the sixth straight time? We think it comes down to one thing. You. Because it's your input and feedback that keeps us focused on what's most important to you and your clients and continually pushes us to be the best we can be. Maybe that's why we receive top marks in every category of the J.D. Power 2019 Advisor Satisfaction Survey. They named us number one in client support, number one in firm leadership, number one in operational support, number one in compensation, number one in professional development support, and number one in technology support. Ready to partner with the best? 
Call Commonwealth at 866-462-3638 or visit Commonwealth.com and feel the power. Member FINRA SIPC, a registered investment advisor. For 2019 J.D. Power Award information, visit jdpower.com slash awards. Vatel Shah is... For the independent bookseller who found you that first edition. For the baker who brings the smell of freshly baked bread to your door. And for the barista who never needs to ask your name. We've all got a part to play. Every little tap keeps your high street alive. And helps your communities thrive. So if you love where you live... Shop Shopping on your local high street can make a big difference. Shop small. Only by American Express. Christmas is almost here, and at Asda, we've got your favourite spirits for just £16 each. That's £16 for a one-litre bottle of Smirnoff vodka or Gordon's gin, or a 70-centilitre bottle of Jack Daniel's whiskey. Looks like you're hosting this year. Asda, let's make Christmas extra special. Selected stores subject to availability. Exclude Scotland. Drink aware. Ho, ho, ho. Who's made a list this year? I want a new phone. One with amazing cameras, ultra-wide lens, of course, live focus video. Well, it has to be 5G ready to stream all my films. Can it come with something awesome to listen to them through? Darling, I think he was talking to the kids. Get everything you want and more. Purchase a Samsung 5G ready device and claim a pair of silver wireless Galaxy Buds at no extra cost. Shop our 5G handsets in store or online at your local O2 store or o2.co.uk. 18 plus. Plus, offer excludes Galaxy Fold 5G. Purchased by the 25th of the 12th, 19. Claim from Samsung within 30 days. T's and C's apply. Hey, NFL fan. Can't watch the game? Can't be there? We've got you covered. With TuneIn Premium, you can listen to every NFL game live as it's happening. Sean McCoy has an opening on the right side. Punches into the end zone for the touchdown. Or catch it later on demand. Offset backs behind Mahomes. The give is to Williams. Starts right, cuts it back to the left, and blows into the end zone for the touchdown. You call the plays. Follow the NFL anytime, anywhere, all season long with TuneIn Premium. Upgrade today. On the goal line, Martin scores! He takes it home! Hockey fans, the 2019-20 NHL season is here. Here's Petrangelo, he scores! The action live on TuneIn Premium. And a move, and a shot, From regular season action to the All Star game and through the Stanley Cup in June. Hear the home and away call for every game for every team live. At home or on the go, never miss a game with the NHL on TuneIn Premium. Upgrade today. Television. Here's Sherry Ann. Robots have replaced thousands of routine jobs on Wall Street. Now they're coming for higher ups. That's the contention of Marcos Lopez de Prado, a Cornell University professor and the former head of machine learning at AQR Capital. We have seen the changes because of machine learning in finance, but how much faster could these changes occur and what's driving this wave of, of, of change? Well, what is driving is data. Uh, today we have data sets that were not available two or three years ago, and the only way to model these data sets is utilizing these complex techniques. When it comes to that congressional hearing that we had recently, of course, the lawmakers were very concerned about bias, uh, whether it's racial, racial bias and so forth in these artificial intelligence uh, mechanisms. Is that easy to fix? Uh, not easy to fix, but definitely it is easier to identify bias in an algorithm than in a human. A human will make a, a few hundred of decisions in, the, in a year, and to identify whether a human is biased is very difficult. However, we can conduct millions of randomized control experiments on an algorithm to identify whether there is bias. And when there is bias, we can correct it. And a, an algorithm that was biased before this correction will not be biased afterwards. I'm much more concerned with bias in human decisions. Hear more interviews like this one on Bloomberg Television, streaming live on Bloomberg.com and on the Bloomberg Mobile app or check your local cable listings markets headlines and breaking news 24 hours a day at bloomberg.com the bloomberg business app and on quick take by bloomberg this is a bloomberg business flash and i'm karen moscow and this update brought to you by interactive brokers their margin loans start at 3.06 percent and decrease for larger loan values rates subject to change learn more at ibkr.com slash compare and futures are now little change to lower. We go to the first word breaking news desk for today's morning call. Here's Bill Maloney. Bill, good morning. And good morning, Karen. U.S. futures will remain quiet since the last time we spoke. With Dow futures down two points, S&P's dropped three, and NASDAQ futures declined by eight. The U.S. 10 yield at 1.94%. Gold is little changed. While well, UPA markets are trading lower this morning. And note the Bank of England held rates at 0.75% in a 7-2 to vote. 
Back in the U.S. on the economic front at 830, current account balance, Philly Fed, and initial jobless claims. After the bell last night, Micron reported gave a strong outlook and suggested demand is rebounding. Shares are up 3% in the pre-market. And regarding earnings this morning, Accenture EPS beat estimates. ConAgra is up 8% pre-market after its earnings. And Darden is down 4% pre-market after its numbers. In deal news, IAC to spin off the match group. And in other news, Prudential is buying back $2 billion in stock. Wrapping things up, Colgate was cut to neutral at Bank of America. And Cisco and J&J were both raised to overweight over at Barclays. Live from the First to Breaking News Desk, I'm Bill Maloney. Karen? All right, Bill, thank you. And to hear live breaking news over here at Bloomberg, type squonk on your terminal, S-Q-U-A-W-K. And that's a Bloomberg Business Flash. Tom, John, and Lisa. Karen, thanks so much. Bloomberg Surveillance this morning, brought you by Innovalon, a leading provider of cloud-based platforms empowering data-driven healthcare for insurance companies, physicians, pharmacies, and pharmaceutical companies. Innovalon Data has a story to tell. Innovalon gives it a voice. A uh, lot going on. Right now we're going to do a little bit of Washington and maybe the path forward for a policy Washington in Capitol Hill. Emily Wilkins joins us now with Bloomberg News. Emily, can there be a policy discussion in the process of impeachment to trial? Can there be any other business? Well, technically in the Senate, no. In the Senate, it will simply be the trial until it is complete. However, uh, in the House, the House is actually going to go right back into policy. We've seen them this week. Uh, last week, they passed the prescription drug bill. Today, they're expected to pass uh, the U.S., Mexico, and Canada trade agreement. Uh, they're also expected to see them uh, pass a major bill rolling back uh, an unpopular tax uh, with some high uh, states such as California, New Jersey, and uh, New York. Emily, uh, while everything was going on with the impeachment, there was a ruling having to do with Obamacare that seems pretty significant that would basically throw out the individual mandate. And this is really important, especially heading into the 2020 election season when so many people are looking at health care. Can you give us a sense of whether any legislators are talking about that or, or sort of discussing the health care's backdrop here? Sure. I mean, health care is a huge issue for many Democrats, uh, many Republicans as well. But Democrats in particular ran on this issue in 2018, and they saw a lot of wins because of it. For, uh, what it sounds like, uh, I was focused a lot on impeachment yesterday, but from the reporting that I saw from my Bloomberg colleagues, it yeah. sounds like the decision is going to go back down to one of the lower courts in part. And so it might not become a big blockbuster issue in the next election, but I'm, it's still something that a lot of voters are thinking about. And I think a lot of people still expect to see being discussed in the run up to 2020. The president out on the Twitter sphere in the last couple of minutes, three minutes ago, writing the following. I got impeached last night without one Republican vote being cast with the do nothing Dems on their continuation of the greatest witch hunt in American history. Now the do nothing party want to do nothing with the articles and not deliver them to the Senate, but it's Senate's call. So Emily, let's talk about that. The next steps, the process here, as it moves from the House to the Senate, how long can Speaker Pelosi keep this back? At this point, there isn't a lot of precedent for it. She could, I think, and technically hold it for a bit. She will be holding it because she wants to make sure that the Senate has time to do things like pass the trade agreement uh, and address other business before they wind up taking uh, taking up the articles of impeachment and yeah. beginning the impeachment trial. And remember, uh, this is going to be today and tomorrow are the last days of Congress. After this, they leave to go home for Christmas. And so those articles will be held at least until everyone gets back in. Right. Emily, Mark Meadows uh, announced today he's not going to run for re-election. This is a Republican from North Carolina, folks. And uh, Emily, to be clear, this is different than a lot of other Republicans announcing they're not going to run for re-election, isn't it? Right. Remember that Meadows has always been particularly close with Donald Trump. Uh, this has been throughout Trump's entire presidency. And Meadows seemed to indicate today that part of the reason for him deciding not to run for re-election is because he wants to see some sort of role either with Trump in the White House or in Trump's 2020 campaign. And so yeah. it seems like he's setting himself up for that. 
I, I, I agree. It's interesting. A nice coverage on that from Bloomberg. And, uh, you know, it, this is distinct, folks, from what we've seen from so many others. Emily Wilkins, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it this morning. An exhausting night for our uh, team there, led by Kevin Cirilli. We thank Kevin. And of course, sound on, Kevin. Is he on tonight? Is he on an airplane somewhere? Anybody? I think he's uh, on. He's on with analysis following the Democratic debate. Oh, okay. Very good. A special deal. edition of Bloomberg. Where sound are those debates Kevin's. tonight, John? Uh, California. California. <laughs> Yes, this is a state where uh, there are one in eight Americans, so California is uh, the biggest Is it prize. really that much? In one in eight season. Americans are in, I did not know that. John yes, is sir. basically walking Wikipedia. It's kind of amazing. You know, actually, I have a screen up here with all these statistics. <laughs> called the Bloomberg Terminal, John. Much like the uh, weather forecast. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, Robiner. the reason why I mentioned health care is because I do wonder how much the impeachment is sort of sucking the oxygen out of the room and, and how much yeah. policy is actually getting done. And I that agree. seems to be where President Trump is trying to use this as his campaign is to basically say, look, yeah. I'm doing, you know, I'm getting impeached and they're trying to impugn our agenda, but we're trying to get stuff right. done. And is there anything else getting done? And that's sort of and a key question. So the Queen's speech today, age 93, and John, it might you as well love have the been history the health of that, don't Yeah, you? but it must have been the health care speech. I, it's remarkable for Americans to see the Queen of England more than a few moments addressing NHS. Well, she's laying out ultimately what the Prime Minister wants her to lay out. These are going to be the big points of focus for the Prime Minister. It's been a stick. The National Health Service has been a stick for the Conservative Party to get hit around the head with every single election. And I think what Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, is trying to do is make sure that they use this opportunity to basically say, we're doing everything you say we wouldn't do. And we're going to invest in this. Is it the same debate as Obamacare here, the Affordable Care Act, or do conservatives actually support the national system? The conservatives support the national system in a way that they don't hear. But there is a difference between how the left and right operate in the okay. UK. It With, deserves more than 20 seconds. Lisa, don't you think it's interesting to get the perspective from the Midlands? Thanks. No, I think it's... I think it's, it's not, okay, no, yes, you. of course I think it's interesting. This I think it's great. It's a segment on this, not a minute. <laughs> this is blue. Not a 20 In the kinks issue. in the background. This is a Bloomberg Market Minute. U.S. stocks remain at or near record highs. The stock futures this morning are narrowly mixed. Dow futures are up three points, but the S&P futures are down three, and the Nasdaq futures are down seven. Crude oil a bit lower at $60.85 a barrel. The embattled California utility PG&E needs Governor Gavin Newsom's support to exit the biggest utility bankruptcy in U.S. history by June 30th. But now a big sticking point has emerged, a clause that would allow the state to take over PG&E if it fails to meet performance and safety metrics. The utility reached a settlement with wildfire victims and their insurers. Now Newsom's sign-off becomes the biggest obstacle to PG&E's efforts to get a restructuring deal done. Did you get a raise this year? There is a roughly 50-50 chance that you did. A new bank rate report shows that 49% of workers did enjoy a pay increase in one form or another. Gina Cervetti, Bloomberg Radio. Rich is just a really, really, really good guy. The term good egg isn't enough to describe him. He's also certified organic and free range. Rich puts the cap back on everything. The toothpaste, the olive oil, the shampoo, everything. He lets his 10-year-old nephew beat him at virtual tennis, even though he can straight up slay his 10-year-old nephew in virtual tennis. When the toilet paper is running low, Rich replaces the roll on the actual holder, not just on the back of the toilet. Rich is texting and driving. Rich, no. What are you doing, Rich? I was just telling everyone how great you are. Texting and driving makes good people look bad. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A public service announcement brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Asset managers who seize change. I used to be a bit of a rubbish sleeper. I'd toss and turn all night. And somehow I could never find the comfy bit of the mattress. <laughs> it was a proper nightmare. That's what brought me here, testing mattresses in the Witch Test Lab. We use a custom-made barrel rolling machine to simulate a decade's worth of use. And the mattresses that perform best are the only ones we recommend for your bedroom. Witch tests harder so you can buy smarter. Visit witch.co.uk. The extraordinary sale is now on at Bista Village. 
with up to 60% of the recommended retail price at participating boutiques until the 24th of December. Enjoy luxury for less at Emma Bridgewater, The White Company, Moulton Brown, The Cruzet, and many more. With free parking, all-day festive dining, and restaurants open late, it's the perfect time to do your Christmas shopping. The extraordinary sale at Vista Village. When you're not listening to your team, take it to the end zone, the rim, or the net. Keep up with the biggest moments in sports by following TuneIn on social media. Block, hook, into the end zone for the touchdown. From reminders of the live top games to tips of the best sports stations and podcasts. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Follow Famous. Follow at TuneIn on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to get the most out of TuneIn. Want to know a quick, easy way to see if your favorite podcasts have a new episode available? Just go to the home screen on your TuneIn app and see the latest additions under the Your New Episode section. Happy listening. Spend Christmas Day listening to the NBA on TuneIn Premium. Featuring five big matchups on the holiday schedule, unwrap the action starting at 12 Eastern when the Celtics take on the Raptors in Toronto, followed by the Bucks and the 76ers at 2.30. The holiday cheers continue with the Rockets and Warriors at 5 and the Clippers and Lakers at 8 and a showdown between the Pelicans and Nuggets at 10.30. Tis the season with the NBA on TuneIn Premium. Upgrade today. Hey, NFL fan, can't watch the game? Can't be there? No biggie. Hot. With your TuneIn Premium membership, you already have an all-access pass to every team and every game in the league. Amazing, right? Steps up, floats it towards... At the goal line, it's intercepted! Listen live as the action unfolds or on demand when you can. Anytime, anywhere, all season long. Right side, it is caught. It is in for the right side for the touchdown. To Keenan... Search NFL today. Broadcasting live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio in New York. Bloomberg 1130 to Washington, D.C. Bloomberg 991 to Boston. Bloomberg 1061 to San Francisco. Bloomberg 960 to the country. Sirius XM Channel 119 and around the globe. The Bloomberg Business App and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Surveillance. From New York City, this is Bloomberg Surveillance for our audience worldwide. We're live on Bloomberg Radio where your economic indicators are brought to you by Commonwealth Financial Network for the sixth straight time. Jenny Power ranks Commonwealth the number one in independent advisor satisfaction among financial investment firms. Visit Commonwealth.com to learn more. Let's get you that economic data, shall we? Here's Vinny. Down to dice. Okay, Jonathan, let's start with the labor market. Jobless claims settling down after popping a week earlier. Now 234,000, a decline of 18,000 this time of the year. The data uh, can bounce around because of the holiday. So it could have been a quirk the prior month's in uh, prior yeah, weeks, prior yeah. weeks increase in 234,000. Okay, so Tom, let's say things are tame. Unemployment still at a half century low. Also, the current account trade deficit, it narrowed to $124.1 billion in the third quarter. Philly Fed factory index, ouch, weaker than forecast, barely budging in December. 10 o'clock Wall Street time, existing home sales, economists looking for uh, retrenchment. Also, the index of leading economic indicators, keep an eye on it. It's been down for three months in a row. Don't sweep it into the dustbin. Some people consider it obsolete. I'm Vinny Dell, yeah. Vice Bloomberg Radio. Let's go back to New York. Vinny, thanks so much. Well done. John, the four-week moving average of jobless claims, it's not a breakout to gloom, but nevertheless, nicely elevated from the end of September. The important part is it's come in from 252 and back down to 234, Tom. We had a big move out in the previous read of this, and it's come in just a little bit. But still, Tom, you come out to 35,000 feet. You look exactly. at where claims are, near 200K. And many people modeling 3% low or even 2% handle unemployment rate. Which big is focus. Stunning. Big, big focus on this number in the labor market. And for good reason, too. Neil Dutta joins us. Nissan's macro head of U.S. economic research. Great to have you with us, Neil. First of all, walk me through the importance of a read on initial jobless claims. And then give me a little bit of context perspective on, on where we are at the moment. Well, I think the overall level of initial jobless claims remain low. I mean, we have seen layoff announcements uh, come up a little bit. So maybe summarize in a claims is inevitable. But, uh, you know, look, I mean, 234 it's come down. I mean, there's, you know, as Vinny mentioned, I mean, there is always a lot of seasonality around this time of year. Um, so, 
you know, I would look for it to actually come in a little bit more in coming weeks. Um, but, yeah. uh, you know, I'm not really concerned about it. I mean, you look at consumer confidence, I think that's as good an right. indication as any. And that actually rose in December, at least according to the University of Michigan. Your own Bloomberg Consumer Comfort Index has been going up the last few weeks. So, yeah. um, you know, that should tell you all you need to know about uh, whether or not to fade the yeah. recent pop in claims. Now, you've been clearly framed as an optimist here. What part of the GDP equation gives you continued optimism? Is it a better consumer or can it be business investment actually picks up and gets going? Well, no, I mean, I think it's neither of those things. It's housing, right? I mean, so I think the, 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 main, the main issue, I think, Tom, is I, I think investors and, uh, you know, macro folks need to figure out which way does the causality go. Does the causality go from firms to households, or does it go from households uh-huh. to firms? And, uh, and I think historically the causality actually goes from household to firms. I mean, you know, you look at, and in particular, residential investment. I mean, Ed Lehmer wrote a paper now, I think almost uh, 12 years ago now, housing is the business cycle. Well, if you look at, uh, you know, single-family building permits, um, they're up quite strongly uh, over the last, uh, you know, let's say two quarters. And that's going to imply stronger construction activity going forward. Uh, so that's going to be a tail on for residential investment. And importantly, it's single-family residential real estate that's doing the heavy lifting. I mean, you look at new home sales, that's, that's up about 30% over the last year. Um, that's not something that you see 12 months before or even 18 months before a recession. So, you know, stronger new home sales, those are signed contracts, yeah. those homes get built, then they get filled with stuff. So this is a reason to can, be upbeat, I think, on durable goods spending as well. Can multifamily play into that? I mean, one of the great failures, John Farrell, of, of, of my work over the years has been not enough focus on multifamily. Focus on it, Neil. Is it there? Well, I mean, I... <clears throat> It's, it's, it's been holding up surprisingly well, yeah, which, yeah. which sort of suggests that there's this underlying demand there for, um, you know, for, for urban living. But, uh, you know, I think the, the backbone of housing is really single family, and that's what's been in the dumps up until recently. It's, it's finally starting to kind of uh, advance again, and I think that, that's, that's an important story. And it, it's just a reminder that we'll be fading those folks that say, oh, the Fed is pushing on a string. That's not true. They're pushing on a stick, and that's evidenced by what we're seeing in the housing market this year. Neil, let's wrap things up by talking about the global economy. There is a hope that in Q1 things start to pick up. Do you see things picking up and bottoming out sometime soon? Do you see that already? Well, I mean, I definitely think that there is an inventory cycle underway uh, in the Western world, okay? <laughs> but, you know, for me, it's hard to get really bulled up on Europe uh, beyond that. I mean, inventories are very, very lean in Germany. Um, you know, you've seen, if you look at France, for example, you've seen some improvement in manufacturing business sentiment. Um, and, you know, to some extent, that's also true in the U.S. Inventories are running a little bit too low. But, uh you know, I mean, I think Europe's bottomed out. Um, I think it enjoys some modest improvement and growth in the first half of next year. But, uh, you know, I, I, I can't get, get that yeah. excited uh, j- just yet uh, on, on Europe. Neil, thank you. Neil Dutta of Renaissance. Greatly appreciate it uh, this morning. Neil's came Thanks, in Neil. a little bit. On, John, I don't want to oversell it. But I'm more Neil's constructive, Neil Dutta, there yeah. of Renaissance Macro. Yeah. We talked to everybody. The next guy will be down. But that's what makes the show yeah, go. Yeah, he's done a really good job this year, I think, of pushing back some of those recession fears that really did well, get out of control it, at one point in the summer. I, 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 totally. But the, and you, frankly, John, you were making jokes about that at the correct time. But but what's important here is optimism 2.3% GDP, or is it something we're more comfortable with 3%? Who says 2.3% is an optimistic number? And the answer is a lot of people would well, you've got to consider the journey, where we were, uh, oh, where we're we go. going to. <laughs> I don't want to get all sentimental about it. It's a journey. Tom, the fear was that we would return oh. from above trend growth hey. and go somewhere more sinister, and we've stabilized in and around trend. And, show concept. And if we stay here, that's a good thing. Should I do a week and a half hour show, Bloomberg Journey? It's Away from me, on your own. <laughs> it's a journey. Let's make that a weekend show. It's a yeah. journey. Like once a You're going to send Tom to weekend programming? <laughs> it's, a, weekend, it's a journey. <laughs> weekend about 2 a.m. It's a journey. That'll work. T- tuition. It's From a New journey. York, this is Bloomberg.
surveillance on Flimberg Radio. And now with the news in New York City, here's John Tucker. All right, thanks, uh, John and Tom. Now that President Trump has been impeached, the drama now shifts to the Senate for a trial next month. It isn't clear how quickly the House is going to send the articles of impeachment to the Senate. That's a step that would trigger the trial and stop work on any other matters in the Senate. Another Democratic debate tonight. This is going to bring seven candidates to heavily Democratic California. The biggest prize in the primary season, home to one in eight Americans. Bloomberg Radio is going to carry it live. Now, Bloomberg's Kevin Cirilli will have analysis following on Bloomberg's Sound On. And today, after impeaching President Trump, the Democratic-led House expected to overwhelmingly pass one of his signature priorities, a bill implementing terms of the U.S.-Mexico agreement. That is expected to pass with bipartisan support. Global News 24 hours a day on the air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm John Tucker, and this is Bloomberg. Tom. Yeah, John Tucker, thanks so much. Time now for the Bloomberg NBC Sports Report. Here's John Stashauer. Tom, the Yankees have won 210 games over the last two seasons, but one thing was missing. A true ace, a guy who you knew would be on the mound for an opening day or a postseason opener in Garrett Cole. They have that ace. Comes off a brilliant season in Houston. He went over four months without losing a game. He doesn't come cheaply. Nine years, $324 million. But with Cole taken off the Astros and put onto the Yankees, it makes the Yanks the favorite to win a 2020 championship. And that's fine with Cole. Pressure is a privilege. Pressure comes in, in situations that you've earned, right? You know, you pitch in big games in September and October because you've played well all year. I came eight outs away from getting a ring. I'm as hungry as ever to finish that. Uh, finish that journey, finish that challenge. Uh, and in my opinion, there, there would be no better place to do it than New York. Well, if a Yankee fan shaved the beard, as all Yanks have to do, is getting his number 45. Luke Voigt is switching to 59. Hockey in Newark, battle of the last place teams. Kyle Palmieri scored on the power play. The Devils took the lead. They beat Anaheim 3 1. St. John's beat Albany 85 57. St. Peter's lost at UConn. Stony Brook lost to Virginia. And Wagner lost at LaSalle. Before and after coaching the Giants, Tom Coughlin worked in Jacksonville first as coach. More recently, the head of football operations. Now the Jaguars are, for the second time, fired Coughlin. When the Giants visit Washington Sunday, it looks like the rookie quarterback Daniel Jones will be back from that high ankle sprain. That puts Eli Manning back on the bench. For the Bloomberg NBC Sports Update, I'm John Stash. Our Tom. John, thanks so much. Major, major, major shout out to Mr. Coughlin. Of course, you know him from the New York Giants, Bloomberg 1130, uh, New York. I knew with him out of Syracuse University, John Tucker, a zillion years ago. In what I'm guessing capacity? He was football coach at the Rochester Institute of Technology, and he would talk to me as I was going in and out of the hockey locker room. He was total class. To say what? Get out of the way? Get out of the way, kid. <laughs> You're too tall. You're to, you're too to play hockey. Get out of the way. No, he was a huge, hugely gracious guy. Way back then, he had a great presence back then. Way before all the acclaim in uh, uh, football. Tom Coughlin, a, a warm place in the surveillance. All right, futures negative four. They've rolled over a little bit here in the last number of minutes. Down futures at negative six, and the VIX twelve point seven six as well. Big story today: yields higher, curve steeper. We're on a two percent ten year yield. We're not there yet. This is Bloomberg. I was driving. Why is delivering the best client experience a top priority at BNY Mellons Pershing? Michelle Feinstein, Director of Client Engagement, explains. Today's investors want a financial relationship that's on demand, customized, and leverages the latest digital technology. At BNY Mellons Pershing, helping advisory firms and broker dealers create great experiences for their clients is our priority. Through our integrated wealth experience, we give you a high touch service, flexible technology choices, and expert insights so you can deliver a highly personalized experience to your clients at every step from onboarding to wealth planning to performance analysis and more and because we're part of bny mellon you'll benefit from more than 230 years of strength and stability at pershing we're personally invested in your success visit pershing.com to learn more about pershing's integrated wealth experience pershing llc and pershing advisor solutions llc are both members of finra and sipic Message and data rates may apply. TNC and privacy terms can be found at babble.com slash terms. Please don't text and drive. Have you wanted to speak a new language, but you thought it'd be too hard or take too much time? 
Then try Babbel for free by texting EXPLORE to 64000. In just 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to speaking a new language in just a few weeks. And right now, you can try Babbel for free. Babbel starts out teaching you words and phrases by matching them with pictures. You won't believe how easy the interactive program is. Soon the sentences get a little bigger, and before you know it, you're having simulated conversations voiced by native speakers. And because Babbel is crafted by language experts and uses the spaced repetition method, in just 10 to 15 minutes a day, you'll be speaking the language of your choice with real confidence. With Babbel, you can speak a language. Just text EXPLORE to 64000 and start your first lesson in the language of your choice for free. Download the Babbel app or text EXPLORE to 64000 and try it for free. Text E. X-P-L-O-R-E to 64,000. This is your Bloomberg. My name's Ian, and I run the Christmas Centres for Crisis. Many people in Britain are homeless, stuck in hostels, sleeping on floors, even on the street. You can change this. Our Christmas Centres provide people with food, safety and support, and show them how Crisis can help them find a home and a job in the year ahead. You can reserve a place at Crisis this Christmas for just £28.87. Go to crisis.org.uk now. Help someone take their first step out of homelessness this Christmas. Thank you. Hey, NFL fan, can't watch the game? Can't be there? We've got you covered. With TuneIn Premium, you can listen to every NFL game live as it's happening. Sean McCoy has an opening on the right side, punches into the end zone for the touchdown. Or catch it later on demand. Offset backs behind Mahomes. The give is to Williams, starts right, cuts it back to the left, and blows into the end zone for the touchdown. You call the plays. Follow the NFL anytime, anywhere, all season long with TuneIn Premium. Upgrade today. You might already know that TuneIn allows you to listen to all the pro sports leagues wherever you go. But did you know TuneIn is also home to the wide world of college sports? Open three, DeAndre Hunter got it! Hand off Carruthers, big hole right side. He leaps and he surges in, touchdown! From live college football, basketball, and baseball games to podcasts and coaches shows fueling your love for the game and your school. And the best part is, it's all free. Search college sports to find your team or league. Want to tune in to remind you when the big NFL game is about to get underway? Be sure notifications are allowed on your phone and search NFL on the TuneIn app. Find the game you want to hear under events and tap Notify Me. We'll let you know exactly when it's time to listen in for kickoff. The puck drops. Twelve players face off to win. The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. Tune in brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to hockey when it matters most. On tune in. When you're not listening to your team, take it to the end zone, the rim, or the net. Keep up with the biggest moments in sports by following tune in on social media. Block, hook, into the end zone for the touchdown. From reminders of the live top games to tips of the best sports stations and podcasts. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless. Follow and tune in on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to get the most out of tune in. Financial information 24 hours a day. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. This is Bloomberg Radio. Now, a global news update. The start date for the impeachment trial of President Trump is up in the air. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi would not commit to a timeline just after the House passed articles of impeachment last night. Because it's difficult to determine who the managers would be until we see the arena in which we will be uh, participating. The White House is calling Pelosi's move a gimmick, but Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell rejected a proposal from Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer to call witnesses. McConnell has said he's not an impartial juror. Pelosi says that's unfair. Democratic presidential contenders will seek to convince anxious voters that they are the party's best hope to defeat President Trump in next year's election. A televised debate featuring seven of the presidential hopefuls tonight takes place in California. On Wall Street, Dow futures have dropped lower by two points. I'm John Trout. We did all the research for you. This is the grander scheme of electric vehicles. Bloomberg Business Week with Carol Masser and Jason Kelly. Where's their money going? Weekday afternoons at 2 Eastern on Bloomberg Radio. Bloomberg, the world is listening.
Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. And I'm Karen Moscow. Filings for U.S. unemployment benefits fell last week by the most since February. They'll miss forecasts for a larger drop, potentially reflecting lingering seasonal adjustment issues stemming from the late Thanksgiving holiday this year. Jobless claims dropped by 18,000 to 234,000 in the week that ended December 14th. The Federal Reserve Bank of New York's operation to inject cash into the financial system over the end of the year was undersubscribed today, an indication that market participants may have enough funding. Government bonds are falling around the world as a string of central banks kept their interest rates steady while one raised its benchmark. U.S. stock index futures are drifting lower along with stocks in Europe. We check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day on Bloomberg. S&P futures are down three and a half points. Dow futures down five. NASDAQ futures down seven and a half. The DAX in Germany is down half percent. In your treasury down 132nd yield 1.92 percent and the yield on the two-year 1.62 percent nymex crude oil that'll change at 60 dollars one cents a barrel and comex gold up about well up a tenth of a percent it's at 14.80 70 an ounce it's up two dollars the euro 1.1118 against the dollar and that's a bloomberg business flash it is 848 on wall street the following commentary is from bloomberg opinion it can always get worse for fedex I'm Brooke Sutherland, a columnist for Bloomberg Opinion. Back in June, I wrote that FedEx had managed to fall out of a basement window when its 2020 forecast fell well short of low expectations. Two guidance cuts later, it seems we've sunk below the foundation and are in the dirt with the worms. The latest of these misses came after the close of trading on Tuesday. At the low end of its guidance range, FedEx is facing an earnings slide nearly on par with what it experienced in fiscal 2009 amid the financial crisis. What's worse is that its plan to fix this debacle rests largely on a just-trust-us defense from a management team that continues to point the finger for its woes at a weak industrial economy and rising e-commerce costs. Rivals UPS and DHL seem to have a better handle on those things. That doesn't inspire a lot of confidence. I'm Brooke Sutherland. For more opinion, visit Bloomberg.com slash opinion or OPIN Go on the Bloomberg Terminal. This has been Bloomberg Opinion. And Bloomberg Opinion commentaries can be heard every weekday at this time. And Terminal customers can read more at OPIN Go. S&P futures down three points. NASDAQ futures down six, while Dow futures are up three. Bloomberg Opinion. Informed perspectives. And expert data-driven commentary on breaking news. Good morning, everyone. John Farrow and Tom Keen. Thank you for being with us. Right now, we're going to do a number of topics here. We could do that with Alex Webb, writing on technology, writing on everything uh, that we that we talk about and uh, do every day. And and Alex, I love what you did. This is like totally esoteric, but if I go to Needless Markup, I can buy a Bang & Olufsen Sound Edge for $3,500. Nice. Absolute never, bargain. I've never even been in the store. Alex, you're writing on this today. B&O is having trouble, right? Absolutely. They've issued their, or well, yesterday issued their fourth uh, profit warning inside a year. And uh, it seems to be getting at some some real issues and, and changes in the way that we consume our music. Okay, it says that. I'm, again, a needless markup. The Bayo Sound Edge is a speaker that feels your presence. I mean, the game's over. It sounds like they're on a journey to speaker acclaim. Everybody else is buying AirPods, right? I mean, the issue here is really that... Increasingly, the way people listen to music is through a streaming service, Spotify, Apple Music. Um, and those uh, streaming services, the, the sound quality they provide isn't actually that good. It's 320 kilobits per second for the high quality stuff. Now, that compare that to a CD, which was um, you know over 1,400 kilobits a second. The, the, the kind of point of spending thousands upon yeah. thousands of dollars on a really high-end sound system is completely um, eliminated. And so, um, you know, it's one of the factors which is really making it hard for these super high-end um, speaker firms to, to, you know, grow their business. What is the Apple going to do with that? I mean, I, I think one of the huge stories, Alex Webb, is the success of AirPods and, you know, the ear things and all that this year. Am I right that that sort of came out of nowhere, like like the iPod a million years ago? It came out of nowhere, right? Well, they have been. I think it's it's true that the success of the AirPods are probably surprised um, maybe even people internally at Apple. The other huge value of those products 
um, for Apple, in fact, include what they call their wearables section. So it's, you know, AirPods and the Apple Watch. They are hugely important for yeah. keeping people stuck to their iPhones. If you spent $400 on an Apple Watch and another $200 on your um, AirPods, the likelihood of you then deciding the next year, do you know what, right. I think I'm going to get a, uh, an Android phone, is hugely um, reduced because you've got such a financial co- commitment to their product palette. Next topic, the weather, uh, Alex Webb, last night in New York City was remarkable. We had this snow squall thing, which is like, boom, it's on you, Alex. And everybody's in a modest panic about the weather and all that. So what do you do? You call the food delivery firm. I am 100% certain they lost money last night on the minuscule order Afterthought had. Is anybody ever going to make money in food delivery? I mean, it, it's a... I am inclined to say no. Like, the only way that they can do it, and in my view, is that you have um, a single company just owns a market. So one company will do all of the food deliveries in New York, another one will do all of London. That will give them a huge amount of pricing power. Um, and Because the only way they can start making money is either to squeeze more margin out of the restaurants or to uh, ask for higher delivery fees from the, the consumers. And, and, and yeah. until they can do that, it's a really, really tough business. I mean, you're right up Delivery Hero and Woo Wah Brothers and all this. This is in Germany, folks. I mean, every nation's got this. We're all doing it. I get it. But what are the barriers to entry? I mean, you know, on a Michael Porter basis, it doesn't sound like a sane way to get to that dreaded word profit. The difficulty is that you do need to have very strong network effects. You know, you need to have a lot of restaurants. I think one uh, told me that you need to have you know, uh, right. uh, like 25 restaurants in a two mile radius, something like that, in order for it to be, you know, to, to, right. get, to generate the sort of scale where you get the, um, people returning to yeah. it. But to your point, uh, you know, Customers are not loyal on this sort of stuff. There's a, a lot of churn. Um, you know, if they see a different app with a better right. product range, they will go to it. But it's harder. It is harder to do the food delivery piece than it is to do ride hailing. Uh, Alex, off your article of December third on Liverpool versus, I'm told by Mr. Ferrets, Everton. Everton. Not okay. Everton. Okay. And it's on Amazon and streaming. I did my Alex Webb research. I asked a cab driver in London what he thought, and he was heated. The streaming wasn't the same quality as regular TV. What did you learn about Amazon's? sports streaming experience in English football. I mean, it seems like it was just about good enough. Uh, you know, there was a bit of a delay, uh, you know, a few seconds of lag, which, you know, has an impact on people who are doing sp- a lot of sports betting, for instance. But it might well have been enough to convince them to come back another year. The question really for Amazon is going to be, will, will the high expenditure, which is needed to get the, um, you know, the top, uh, the, the, the lion's share of sports rights, yeah. is is that warranted? Did they sign up enough Prime members to offset that cost? And right. ultimately, we need them to tell us that, and they haven't just yet. Joining us with Alex Webb now to get us to the next hour, Paul Sweeney as well. Paul, I remember the first time I saw an NFL game in 4K. Yep. And my te- I just drive. It's like sure. I was sitting in the stadium. Yeah. We're going to give that up for streaming? <laughs> Well, as Alex was saying, I mean, there's um, there's got to be some improvements on the technology, but I think just everybody uh, pretty much believes that the technology will be there and that at yeah. some point these big tech companies like an Amazon, you know, are going to write the really big tickets that, right. you know, for English football today is written by Sky and BT. Right. Uh, so there's no reason to think Amazon with their bank account and some of the other tech companies yeah. can't do it as well. Alex, well, one, one final question. In all the uproar about technology, what is the Alex Webb mystery for next year, for the names like Facebook, you know, all the, all the fancy stuff. I never want to talk about it. That, what's the mystery to you of those companies for next year? I mean, unfortunately, it's going to be regulation again. And I think particularly there's going to be a close eye on what happens here in the UK. Because at post-Brexit, the Competition and Markets Authority will have more autonomy to, to wield some power over these companies. And it said yesterday that it's specifically looking at Google and Facebook's ownership of the advertising stack. And if it can do something there which, which makes them share more data, or perhaps they've even mooted, you know, forcing Google to separate its ad exchange from the rest of the business, that will have huge implications implications for the way their, their business yeah. models operate and then equally what other regulators around the world do. That's the thing I'll be interested mm-hmm. to see what emerges. Alex Webb, thank you so much. Writing for Bloomberg Opinion. And what's great, there's two things great about Alex Webb, folks. One, he does it almost every day. You get a new look, a new view, and it's uncannily smart and distinctive article, article uh, whatever the theme is. Alex Webb, I'll put out the, uh, the, the latest from him here on Twitter here in a bit. Paul, what do you see out there? I mean, it's like a holiday screen. It's another 
the holidays for that. Yeah, you know? well, you know, it's it's red and green, so we got that going for us for the holidays. Yeah. And uh, but like just you know, I think there's very... you know, as, uh, stocks editor Dave Wilson uh, tells us we're you know, there's no more earnings here. Uh, there's really nothing to look at. We know the Fed's on the sidelines here. Trade, you know, slowly making its way towards uh, some yeah. type of resolution, and the market just doesn't care about impeachment. So there's not a lot moving in this market right now. SPX up twenty seven point three zero percent this year. Yep. I mean, you know. And even off of, as I, Barry Ritholtz yesterday said, even if you look at it from the September 2018 peak, it's still a double-digit return. Guy came up on the street yesterday and he said to me, are you really in the triple leverage cash <laughs> I said, yeah, actually yeah. I am. I can gross that yield out. I think the yield is like 1.3% triple yep. leverage. But it's a up. safe 1.3%. Yeah, return. you know, I'm, I'm pocketing. There's, there's Minute. Christmas is almost here, and at Asda, we've got your favourite spirits for just £16 each. That's £16 for a one-litre bottle of Smirnoff Vodka or Gordon's Gin, or a 70 centilitre bottle of Jack Daniel's Whiskey. Looks like you're hosting this year. Asda, let's make Christmas extra special. Selected stores subject to availability exclude Scotland Drink Aware. There's no way I'm sanding these floorboards by hand. Want to power through your timber projects? Head to the B&Q Tool Shop. Get hands-on in store with our wide range of electric sanders and planers, including the McAllister Random Orbit Sander, for just £30. The B&Q Tool Shop. You can do it when you b and it. Ah, Christmas. A time for celebrating, unwrapping and unwinding. Capture every moment with an epic iPhone 6S with a 12-megapixel camera. Now only £12.99 a month from Tesco Mobile, saving you £72. It's just one of the ways we're celebrating 100 years of great value. Go in store or search Tesco Mobile. Tesco Mobile. Every little helps. Saving £2 per month over 36 months was £14.99. 36-month credit and rolling monthly usage agreements required. Subject to status, terms apply. See tescomobile.com slash terms. Right now, instead of hearing this, you could be listening to the music that keeps you moving with TuneIn Premium. Find today's biggest songs and all of your favorites commercial-free. Visit TuneIn.com slash premium to upgrade. 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is Bloomberg Radio. This is Bloomberg Surveillance Economics. The good news is the economy is strong. The bad news is the economy is strong. Financial crises take a really long time to recover from. Finance. The strong job market's pulling people back in. You can't have for very long in a monetary union without a fiscal union. Investment. What we preach is extreme diversification. It's hard to have sustained productivity without capital investment. Bloomberg Surveillance with Tom Keen and Paul Sweeney on Bloomberg Radio. Good morning, everyone. Paul Sweeney. Trini and Tom Keen, we welcome all of you to Bloomberg Surveillance on Economics, Finance, Investment, International Relations, and of course, the Politics. We thank our Washington team, particularly Kevin Cirilli, for coverage on uh, the impeachment. Mr. Cirilli jetting to Los Angeles, and we'll have a special edition of Sound On tonight after the debates. Uh, you'll hear that on Bloomberg Radio. Turn to the screen as well. Uh, Paul, we had a Grinch sighting. We did. Grinch signing. Dennis Gartman has entered the building. He'll be with <laughs> us later. Good to know. Uh, that'll be good to know. Looking forward to it. He's on his edge of retirement. That's what he? I read. I just read that. Yeah. You know, he's, you know, he had a set of golf clubs he was carrying <laughs> uh, with him here. We'll speak to Mr. Gartman here uh, in a bit. There are days where David Wilson comes to me and goes, you know, Tom, I really need two hours this morning. I got 42 earnings and they're all important. How are you making it up today, Dave? I mean, what do you do on a day like this? It's sort of a holiday do you read like, do you go back and read old red herrings of March of 2000? You know, there's actually a number of earnings reports to talk about. Okay. I mean, this week is really the last week of the year for S&P 500 companies to release results. 
And Micron Technology really front and center in early trading. Stocks up 4%. The memory chipmaker's profit and sales for the fiscal first quarter fell less than analysts expected in the Bloomberg survey. And uh, CEO Sanjay Marotra said uh, Micron sees results hitting bottom in the second quarter, meaning this quarter. And uh, shares of rival Western Digital, by the way, uh, also mm-hmm. higher. They're up about 2.5%. Cisco Systems up 1%. The networking equipment maker was raised to the equivalent of buy from Holt at Barclays. And we have a couple of deals to talk about. One of them, Match Group. You know them from the dating sites Tinder and Match.com. Up 3%. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> Match signed a definitive <laughs> agreement to separate from its majority owner, IAC Interactive Another Corp. deal. So this is a Barry Diller thing. This yes, it Diller. is. Absolutely. Match Group said expects the split to be done in next year's second quarter. IAC, by the way, also just a bit higher, up 1%. Are, are they divorcing? You know, They're swiping left, I think. Well, <laughs> something like that. I mean, IAC has this history of you know, supporting businesses and then sending them off on their own. Match is going to become the latest example. Uh, Ecolab's up three quarters of a percent. Who are you looking percent. for? I'm a man seeking a woman. <laughs> I'm a woman seeking on and on. Then you put your zip code in and you view photos. Yep. That's what the kids tell me. (laughs) Moving on. Equal Labs up three quarters of a percent. The chemical company will combine its oil services unit with Apergee in a deal valued at $3.9 billion. Uh, Ecolab investors will receive about a 62% stake in the combined company in Apergee, whose ticker, by the way, is APY, up 14% in early trading. Accenture down 1%. The technology consulting firm indicated fiscal year profit and revenue may come up short of projections, even though first quarter results exceeded estimates. Uh, Darden Restaurants down 3.5%. Sales at the company's biggest chain, Olive Garden, rose 1.5%. Locations open more than a year. Trouble is, uh, analysts were looking for comparable sales growth of a bit more than 3% based on a consensus yeah. metric survey. And uh, I'll point out Rival International, uh, Brinker International, also down in early trading. We make jokes about it, but David Wilson sits in the turret with three Bloomberg logins and reads sure. everything in sight. David, what have you heard about holiday sales? I can't say I've seen much to this point. I'm the same way. It's been remarkably quiet. I think that you know, I think the authorities, you know, the retail federations were calling for for about four percent growth. I'm not sure how that the numbers are actually coming. Revenue out. growth. Yeah. But what about same profit? Story. Oh boy. Who knows? Yeah. Then you, then you talk about all the discounting that brings the people in the doors. Let me just get a few more in while I'm at it. Conagra Brands up seven percent. Fiscal second quarter results showed the food maker sales beat the average estimate for the first time in six quarters. Earnings also surpassed projections. Mosaic though down one and a half percent. The fertilizer maker said it plans to cut production in response to falling prices. And TiVo's in the news. Another deal. Stock's up seven and a half percent. The inventor of the digital video recorder agreed to merge with technology licensing company Xperi. The all-stock deal is valued at $1.2 billion. TiVo suspended plans to spin yeah. off its patents as a, second, a separate company. Xperi, by the way, down 11 and a half percent. Can we... Uh, Get right Aid in. Please. Up 30.5%. Wow. The drug store chain's earnings for the fiscal third quarter were well above estimates and sales top projections for the first time in five quarters. Bloomberg Stocks Editor Dave Wilson, David, thank, you. thank you so much. I tell you, it makes chicken salad you know, every day, even if there's not that much news out there. So, Tom, the SEC, get this, is proposing to give more investors more access to things like private equity funds, hedge funds, oh, private securities talking, yeah. deals. So yeah. stuff that was historically yeah. held up for institutions or maybe you know, wealthy yeah. individuals. Arthur Levitt, former chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission, can help us figure out what's going yeah, please, on here. So, Arthur, Arthur what's, what's the SEC trying to do here? Well, they're <clears throat> trying to broaden our markets, which is essentially one of the functions of the commission. Uh, opponents of the proposal, are, of course, are worried that retirees and naive investors uh, will take too much risk, potentially losing their savings. I don't agree with that. I think that uh, investors have to assume a certain amount of risk. Uh, the government regulation cannot protect investors from themselves. So that uh, I think the proposal uh, it is a sound one, and I think uh, this is part of 
Jay Clayton, the chairman's yeah. move to broaden our markets in a very constructive way. Arthur, it makes sense. And I guess you could bundle in and you do private equity and you, burn, you know, you've got a private memorandum and you read it and you sign it and you move on to greater access and all that. Except a lot of this is going to involve within the blended in sophisticated derivative complex transactions. Are mom and pop ready for the complex transactions we're talking about? No, they probably are not. And one of those complex transactions that turns sour will create a totally different regulatory environment. We're now in a fairly permissive regulatory environment. But that will change very quickly if uh, some scandal develops involving investors that uh, aren't equipped to deal with very sophisticated products. And uh, this is a never-ending cycle of expanding and retracting uh, regulation. So, Arthur, you know, I think one of the concepts that's kind of, you know, kind of governed individual investors is that whole concept of accredited investors. What is an accredited investor? Generally speaking, an accredited investor is one that uh, has at least $200,000 in annual income or a million dollars in net assets, not including their home. Uh, Is that enough to meet the products that are being offered today? Probably not. Uh, It sounds like a lot, but it really isn't. Arthur, will there be disclosure within this new access? I mean, if I'm an accredited investor in the old days, I got a 27-page memorandum, and I looked at my lawyer and said, what do you think? For mom and pop, if they're going to go into private equity, are they going to actually know what they're buying? Probably not. Probably not. <clears throat> They'll know what their neighbor says about their experience right. investing, but yeah. <clears throat> they certainly won't be able to understand uh, yeah. a prospectus. It's a really important topic. Arthur Levitt, thank you so much. The former chairman of the SEC and, of course, Bloomberg LP board member. Paul, I will never forget, and I'm not going to go into the names and the details, I was involved in a cattle breeding program. Cattle breeding program. Cattle breeding program. And it had a cash on cash workout for two or three years. It worked like a charm. And Until then, it didn't. <laughs> and the disclosures there, the photos are there. Happy cows in the field. <laughs> you know what? I, I, all my radar's up on this. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, 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 agree could, with you. I, I maybe this is where Arthur and I collegially disagree. And it, with great respect, I say that to the chairman, but. Yeah, it just you know, seems like this is, uh, we've seen that from this SEC, you know, much more, more deregulatory under the Trump administration, uh, trying to open up markets, as Arthur said. And I think that certainly has some attributes, yeah. but it, boy, it just that risk factor comes in and uh, that whole concept of accredited investors and, it, it, you know, and what is that? Because there's some, you know, some literature out there that says more and more people are becoming accredited investors. Just I as agree. Wealth They're just wealth grows and but, the limits are too low versus yep. where they were 20 years ago. Yep. Yeah. So, I, well, we'll see what the new limits are, but I, I, uh, <laughs> I would love to hear from you. Email me in, harass Dennis Garvin, whatever you want to do, harass us on this. It's interesting what an accredited cattle uh, breeding. investor is. Ca- cattle breeding. I mean, they breed mm. like... Okay. <laughs> All right. Very good cash on cash returns, John. It was very good for, for 24 months. And oops. Anyways, uh, yes, so that was, you know, two years' tuition. Uh, we will continue. Red and green on the screen. F- uh, futures negative three down, futures up 12 as well. This is a huge treat coming up. I want to be clear. Dennis Gartman will be with us. He's got a set of the golf clubs he's got in here. Just extraordinary. Yeah, he's ready. He's, brought, I mean... he's ready to go. This is Bloomberg. Let's get national headlines right now with John Tucker. John. And Donald Trump will be the first impeached U.S. president to seek re-election in more than 150 years. He's betting voters in key swing states will view his rebuke at the hands of House Democrats as a rallying cry. At a rally at Battle Creek, Michigan last night, as the House voted to impeach him, he was met with chants of four more years. Thank you very much. So, that's it. We have the greatest country. We've turned around a ship. We need 
four more years. A recent national polls have shown weakening support for Mr. Trump's removal from office. And in states including Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, data and interviews by Bloomberg suggest the picture is even brighter for the president. Global News 24 hours a day on air and on Quintic by Bloomberg. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts yeah. in more than 120 countries. I'm John Tucker. This is Bloomberg, Tom. John, did I tell you about my red wheat contract? I bought it last summer. <laughs> How'd that I'm work down out $2 a bushels. Wait, that must mean garbage next. This is Bloomberg. And with a to the Why has J.D. Power ranked Commonwealth Financial Network number one in independent advisor satisfaction among financial investment firms for the sixth straight time? We think it comes down to one thing, you, because it's your input and feedback that keeps us focused on what's most important to you and your clients and continually pushes us to be the best we can be. Maybe that's why we receive top marks in every category of the J.D. Power 2019 Advisor Satisfaction Survey. They named us number one in client support, number one in firm leadership, number one in operational support, number one in compensation. Number one in professional development support and number one in technology support. Ready to partner with the best? Call Commonwealth at 866-462-3638 or visit Commonwealth.com and feel the power. Member FINRA SIPC, a registered investment advisor. For 2019 J.D. Power Award information, visit JDPower.com slash awards. 25 years ago, NJIT graduate Dick Sweeney co-founded Keurig Green Mountain a company whose incredible innovations change the way the world brews a cup of coffee. Today, he lectures widely on business leadership and is a strong advocate for NJIT's work to combine business education with the power of STEM. NJIT is definitely fostering the innovative thinking for budding entrepreneurs simply because that's the world we live in. NJIT is producing students that have been trained, educated, and given the business acumen to be a contributor to a company. The distinct mission is to develop great STEM scholars. The attributes I've always looked for in team members are heart, smarts, guts, and luck. So we want people with passion, intelligence, courage, and never discount luck. The student coming out of NJIT has uh, has experienced all of that. NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology. Learn more at njit.edu. Asset managers who seize change. Ah, Christmas. A time for sharing gifts and laughter. And photos and videos. Make the most of it with a SIM-only deal packed with data from Tesco Mobile. Like a 10-gig SIM for just £13 a month. It's just one of the ways we're celebrating 100 years of great value. Go in store or search Tesco Mobile today. Tesco Mobile. Every little helps. Ends 29th of December. 12-month contract and unlocked 4G-enabled phone required. Terms apply. See tescomobile.com slash terms. Ho, ho, ho. Who's made a list this year? I want a new phone. One with amazing cameras, ultra-wide lens, of course, live focus video. Well, it has to be 5G ready to stream all my films. Can it come with something awesome to listen to them through? Darling, I think he was talking to the kids. Get everything you want and more. Purchase a Samsung 5G ready device and claim a pair of silver wireless Galaxy Buds at no extra cost. Shop our 5G handsets in store or online at your local O2 store or o2.co.uk. 18 plus. Offer excludes Galaxy Fold 5G. Purchase by the 25th of the 12th, 19. Claim from Samsung within 30 days. T's and C's apply. When you're not listening to your team, take it to the end zone, the rim, or the net. Keep up with the biggest moments in sports by following TuneIn on social media. Block, hook, into the end zone for the touchdown. From reminders of the live top games to tips of the best sports stations and podcasts. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless. Follow and tune in on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to get the most out of TuneIn. Spend Christmas Day listening to the NBA on TuneIn Premium. Featuring five big matchups on the holiday schedule, unwrap the action starting at 12 Eastern when the Celtics take on the Raptors in Toronto, followed by the Bucks and the 76ers at 2.30. The holiday cheers continue with the Rockets and Warriors at 5 and the Clippers and Lakers at 8 and a showdown between the Pelicans and Nuggets at 10.30. Tis the season with the NBA on TuneIn Premium. Upgrade today. 
Taylor Riggs. Hotel chains and home sharing sites have been encroaching on each other's turf, and the latest player to blur the line is hospitality startup Sonder. Its model is a mix between WeWork and Airbnb. Now with a $1 billion valuation, Sonder is making a move into traditional hotels. I spoke to Sonder CEO Francis Davidson on Tuesday about the business model and how he plans to make Sonder stand out. The way that Sonder works is by partnering with developers, um, and uh, effectively, we lease buildings. Uh, last quarter, about 72% of the properties we took on was the entire building we managed. Um, and uh, you know, the idea is that we make spaces really attractive uh, for travelers. It's kind of a next generation hotel experience, uh, one which um, usually offers you an apartment, a studio, a multi bedroom apartment sometimes, and also uh, recently actual hotel rooms. We use a lot of technology to make the experience really frictionless. So, very competitive space. Is the technology why I would use Sonder instead of someone else? Uh, I think it really, I mean, you know, there's a trillion a year that's spent on accommodations globally, and, you know, there's a lot of players. Marriott, the biggest in the world, has just a 4% market share, so there's a wide range of choices that, that, that consumers have. I think at the end of the day, what they love about what we offer is that they get a really attractive, sizable property for a cost that's usually a fraction of a hotel room. Hear more interviews like this one on Bloomberg Television, streaming live on Bloomberg.com and on the Bloomberg mobile app. Or check your local cable listings. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. And I'm Karen Moscow. The Bloomberg Futures Report brought to you by IBKR and CME Group. The new micro e-mini futures contracts are available at IBKR at the lowest commissions. Learn more at IBKR.com slash CME Mini. Government bonds falling around the world as a string of central banks either kept their benchmark interest rates steady or raised them. U.S. stock index futures, they're little changed along with European shares, leaving equities and major markets lingering close to record highs. We check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day on Bloomberg. Guess P futures down one and a half points. Dow futures up 22. NASDAQ futures down three. The DAX in Germany's down about a third of a percent. Ten-year Treasury down three thirty seconds. Yield 1.92 percent. Yield on the two-year 1.62 percent. NYMEX crude oil up about two tenths percent or nine cents at 61.02 a barrel. COMEX gold up a tenth of a percent. Up a dollar eighty to 14.8050 an ounce. The euro is at 1.1118 against the dollar. The British pound 1.3062 and the yen 109. Point three five, and that's a Bloomberg Business Flash. Tom and Paul. Karen, thank you so much. Paul Sweeney and Tom Keen, and we are thrilled to bring you his first interview after announcing uh, an ease back in the schedule from the grind of every day, every day. And trust me, folks, if you're on Global Wall Street, you know the grind of every day, every day to occasionally during the week. He first began publishing uh, when his book was released in 1957, The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. And we're well, <laughs> we're thrilled to have the Grinch with us here today, Dennis Gar- Hartman is all Dennis. A lot of people saying, why? Is it about health? Is it about this? Is it about that? Did Mrs. Gartman say enough? Do we blame the president? Is it President Obama's fault? Why are you retiring? Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's all, yes. It's all of the above. It's uh, primary. First of all, it's the, the guys that I used to play golf with and beat all the time who retired three years are, are, are beating me now. So I've got to try to retire and try to catch up with them. But quite honestly, <laughs> When I started doing this 35 years ago, I got the China People's Daily two days late in the mail, and I was still a week ahead of everybody else. Yeah. Now everybody gets the China People's Daily on the Internet. I mean, it's instantaneous. So the, yeah. the transformation of, of the business has, has simply gone past me. So I'm, yeah. I've, I've decided that nearly 70 years old, and then getting up for 35 years at 1 o'clock yeah. in the morning trying to knock this thing out, it's time to say I've grown past. You always have to throw <laughs> history into it. And yeah. you've got a wonderful thing here uh, from a guy you used to work with, Jess Livermore. And you go, after all, <laughs> th- after all, this is a bull market. <laughs> yeah. You think, Dennis, is uh, it still a bull market? It's still a bull market. That's a great line from uh, Reminiscences of a Stock Operator, which is a book that everybody who's an investor or a trader should read and twice. Re-read. And reread twice. You ought to see my copy. It's just dog-eared beyond belief. But there's a great section in there where Jesse is talking about getting out of a winning trade. And he talks to Old Turkey. And Old Turkey says, well, after all, it's still a bull market. <laughs> and there's something to be said for that. It, it, it is still a bull market. Things are going from the lower left to the upper right. And they'll continue. Write this down until they stop. So that's the question that we, Tom and I, probably get most often here on surveillance is, you know, we're 10 plus years into this economic cycle. The markets have just been ripping since the financial crisis. And we just had a great 2019. What do I do for 2020? 
Pray, pray, pray. There's the, 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 the trend is still up, and it's, it's shocking to me. And four years ago, I thought that the bull market could have come to an end. Three years ago, it should have come to an end. Two years ago, it should have come to an end. It'll come to an end when it comes to an end. You have indications, the types of activities that occur at, at tops. WeWork is a perfect example of the yep, market. Yep. Uh, you were a big shareholder in that, weren't you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I was trying to be, I, I was hoping it would go public so I could get short. Yeah. You had the, the last week that uh, that wonderful banana that attached to a wall with with, right. uh, with duct tape. <laughs> you bought that. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, actually, a friend of mine did. Uh, but those are the sorts of things that happen at market tops. But, uh, you know, this the market looks like it wants to go parabolic, and it'll, it'll continue until some geopolitical circumstance changes things. It's interesting. I think, you know, it's – I don't really – I'm trying to think back to how the markets behaved during the 98 impeachment of President Clinton. But this market just doesn't care. It doesn't care. And All nor, nor should it, do you think? Well, it, yes, it should, but it doesn't. And until it starts to care, then, then it cares. It'll care when it cares, and it won't care until then. All news in this environment is bullish. That's simply the matter of fact. That's what's going on. You may find it ludicrous, and I find it absolutely ludicrous. But nonetheless, to fight that trend, I've tried to fight it two or three times. It's is it a, just the? I mean, I, I, you know, based upon my thirty years in the business, if there's one, you know, truism I've learned, it's just interest rates. Do not fight the Fed. And Don't if fight the Fed. The Fed's sitting on the sidelines. That was Marty Zweig's great line, yep. and it's something that everybody should remember. Don't fight the Fed. Well, we've seen this in space this year. I mean, and you've written about this, Dennis, and it's to, to the point of the great Martin Zweig this year with a vengeance, vengeance. the central bank has shown their power. They're on the edge of ultra-accommodative. Inflation-adjusted Fed funds target rate is rolling back. Do you perceive we're going to more ultra-accommodation? Do they find normalcy here? Or are we all going to get faked out with them like we did last year when they said rates are going up? What's their propensity to tighten? I think their propensity to tighten is borderline zero for at least the next year or so. Is their propensity to ease any, any greater? Probably not. I think we could be right where we're at in Fed funds a year from now is where we're at right now. I think that's, that's, that's probably normal for the, for the next 12 months or so. Zero Edge had a great chart they took from somebody that was the six top, top stocks are concentrated like they were in 1999. Yeah. What does that signal to you? That's the kind of activity that you get at a market top, but it can continue to go for a while. If long. I own Amazon and Apple now, I got lucky and I got gains, what do I do? Hang on. Put a stop in. Buy puts. Do something. Write calls. But uh, the market's told you that you're right. Why, no, why, why would you get out? That every time I, every, yep. The past two years, every time I've had something that was profitable and I decided I'd take a shot and get out, <laughs> I'd wish two weeks later that I hadn't done that. I mean, that's just what the market's telling us. That the, 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 one of the great lines that to, to be uh, embraced is it, it, it was either by Lord Keynes or my good friend Gary Schilling. It doesn't matter who it went to. Lord the mar- Schilling. Lord, <laughs> Lord Schilling, yes. The market can remain illogical far longer than you or I well, can remain solvent. We've got 30, 40 seconds here, and then we'll come back with you, Dennis. I mean, that's the call of our lifetimes has been Gary Schilling, his call of disinflation. Of, of the bond market. There's absolutely. Absolutely. No absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, Gary right. nailed it. People laughed at him when he started to talk about it 35 years ago, and yeah. he's been right ever since. It's extraordinary. Call. What we're going to do is come back with Dennis Gartman. Lots to talk about uh, here with futures at negative two. Mr. Gartman, of course, writing his letter, we protect the copyright of all of our guests unless they're retiring. Yeah, no, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you can get the Gartman letter, and it will still be published. Look for that uh, from Mr. Gartman. Uh, you know, you know, I love this. He's got seven and counting. Yes. He's, he's counting down. Days. He's counting down. Yeah, well, don't we all? No, we're counting yeah. him by the years here. <laughs> and Mike has the surveillance casket out back. That's right. He's going to roll me. He's going to roll me into uh, one day. Dollar a little bit weaker here. Return to the market. Yen one hundred nine uh, thirty five as well. Gold. I give it to you in euros, but I can't figure out the math. I can figure out gold in euro or gold in yen. I can do it on the Bloomberg terminal in one uh, click. Worldwide, this is Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Market Minute. A measure of business activity in the Philadelphia Fed region fell, and it came in lower than what economists were estimating. Meanwhile, investors are also assessing the latest jobless claims numbers. They were down by 18,000 in the latest week. That total, though, was less than what economists were looking for. Did you get a pay raise this year? There's a roughly 50-50 chance that you did. A new bank rate report shows that 49% of workers did enjoy a pay increase in one form or another. That was up from 38% last year and the highest amount since 2016. 
But half of U.S. workers did not see their pay go up, and for lower earners, it was worse. Two-thirds of those making less than 30000 a year saw no pay hike in 2019. Futures are little changed. Dow futures up 17, S&P futures down 2, NASDAQ futures down 3. Gina Cervetti, Bloomberg Radio. Business is constantly evolving. Is your financial printer evolving to keep ahead of the curve? At Command Financial, we are redefining financial printing by providing industry-leading expertise, leveraging technology, and honing processes and best practices. Every day, Command helps SEC registrants, as well as members of their working groups, including securities attorneys and investment bankers, prepare, file, and disseminate regulatory and disclosure documents, such as registration statements, M&A documents, and mutual fund prospectuses and reports. Command provides a full range of services to help you effectively complete your deal, meet your disclosure requirements, and achieve your shareholder communications objectives. Visit our website at commandfinancial.com and learn how we're evolving, not only with the times, but also with your business requirements. Command Financial, redefining financial printing. Imagine, for the independent bookseller who found you that first edition. For the baker who brings the smell of freshly baked bread to your door. And for the barista who never needs to ask your name. We've all got a part to play. Every little tap keeps your high street alive and helps your communities thrive so if you love where you live shop small shopping on your local high street can make a big difference shop small only by american express at wix we'll create your dream kitchen from design to show off ready and take care of everything and now get up to 50 percent off showroom kitchen units book your free design appointment today Cure your house embarrassment with Wix. Selected ranges excluded. See wix.co.uk. Be honest. How much attention are you really paying to this advert? 25%? Maybe 30% if you're sitting in traffic and the kids have stopped arguing. What about 0%? Well, now's the time to give 0% attention. Because for a limited time only, the entire mini range is available with 0% APR. All you need to decide is which mini is perfect for you. Good to know we've now got 100% of your attention. Search 0% mini to find out more. Who's in? Minimum 25% deposit on 24-month select agreements for new models registered by 31st of December 2019 at participating retailers subject to availability. Excludes Mini Electric. UK residents age 18 plus. Guarantees may be required. Mileage and other conditions apply if you return the vehicle. T's and C's apply. Mini UK, a trading name of BMW UK Limited, is a credit broker, not a lender. Forget the cheese basket and socks this holiday season and get the ones you love and even the ones you just kind of like. A subscription at TuneIn Premium. With TuneIn Premium, you'll be giving them the gift they can enjoy all year long. Featuring live NFL, NBA, NHL, and MLB games. Commercial-free news and nonstop music. TuneIn Premium brings the best of audio to you. This year, we're making Santa's job a whole lot easier. So, forget the stocking. Stuff their phone with TuneIn Premium. Search Premium to start your free trial. Far wing elevates triple bucket. The war of the crowd. The shot clock ticks down. Will the ball go in? The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. And the replays just don't cut the it. The sideline, the man bleeds for three. TuneIn Premium brings you every minute of the NBA season streaming live, so you can be there when it matters most. Hear it now. Hear it live on TuneIn. I'm faking the lane. Turnaround jumper from eight feet is good. On Search the NBA today to start listening. And from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio in New York, Bloomberg 1130, to Washington, D.C., Bloomberg 991, to Boston, Bloomberg 1061, to San Francisco, Bloomberg 960, to the country, Sirius XM Channel 119, and around the globe, the Bloomberg Business App and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Surveillance. Good morning, I'm Karen Moscow, along with Tom Keenan, Paul Sweeney, and the opening bell is brought to you by SEI. With a 50-year history of innovation, SEI's outsourced solutions help achieve lasting success for investment managers, asset owners, private banks, and independent advisors. Learn more at SEIC.com. The S&P 500 higher, up a tenth of a percent, or three points at 3,194. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up two tenths percent, or 51 points, at 28,288. And the Nasdaq's up two tenths percent, or 13 points at 88.41. Ten-year Treasury down 4.30 seconds, yield 1.93%. Yield on the two-year, 1.62%. NYMEX crude oil up 2.
Percent or 12 cents at 61.05 a barrel. And Comex Gold is up a tenth of a percent, up a dollar 20 to 14.79.90 an ounce. The euro 1.1122 against the dollar. The yen 109.37. Tom and Paul. Uh, Karen, thanks so much. Paul Sweeney and Tom Keen, and we are thrilled, that Dennis Garvin, uh, with us this morning. Dennis, this is an historic day. I think for people that have read you for years, they know uh, that you are of a GOP persuasion. You have had constructive con- criticism of President Obama over the years. And you have made no secret of your, with your scathing criticism uh, of Mr. Trump as well. The sadness last night when Afterthought came into the room and said, does this mean the president loses his job? And I have explained to a 12-year-old, you know, the process and what's going on. The somberness yesterday of this as well. And I want to go to your support, as you've written in your note for years, of Republican politics. Can the Republican Party, Party of Lincoln survive no. this 2019? No. No, it cannot. The Republican Party has given up being the Republican Party. It used to be the party of lower taxes and free trade. Now it's the Republican Party of Mr. Trump. Okay. And that's what it's become. It's a, it's a personality cult. Yeah. And I find that disconcerting. I, I, I have been a Republican all my life, and I find it very difficult to, to maintain my position. Is this the Whigs of 1842? I mean, I mean, you're steeped in the Henry Clay. You went to it's a small college in North Carolina, North Carolina yes. State, which is the, <laughs> that's the land-grant Whig school of the South. <laughs> but is this, are they going to go the way of the Whigs? Yeah, I think, they're gonna, sadly, they're going to disappear. I'm, 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 afraid, I'm afraid that that's exactly what's going to happen. Um, the, the, the better minds of the party are leaving quietly at the fringes. And, and this is, yeah, l- let me repeat, this is disconcerting. Do you expect the Republicans to stand firm with the president during the Senate oh, they will. issue? And it's just a pl- political survival? They will. They, they have no choice. They, they know if they don't, they're going to be scathingly reviewed by the president on, on the national media, and they're going to be hurt by it. So he's, he's in the controlling position. So the best they'll get is, uh, the, the best the Democrats will get is maybe one defector. And if that, I'd be surprised. So as an investor, as I you know go through this month of January here, is a risk to my portfolio for wherever, how the Senate issue plays out? No, I mean, we know how the Senate issue is going to play out. They need to get two-thirds of, uh, percent of the, of, the, of the votes in the Senate, and they're not going to get close to that. In fact, it probably will be a majority in voting in his favor. I may find that disconcerting, but that's, what, that's the reality of the circumstance. So what's the, what's the risk? The risk is that some untoward news may come out of the president, some <coughs> silly thing that he said. But even that's, uh, I think, a rel- relatively in- in inconsequential risk. Agreed on the screen. Dennis Gartman with us, of course, the Gartman letter. The Dow, 28,318. When Mr. Gartman joined the business, Dow was at 312. <laughs> exactly. Actually, was right a, now. A, first, actually, it was 476. 476. <laughs> I, I do remember that. Somebody was saying go to cash at the time. <laughs> yeah, right? Well, there were. Right now, first time, first time caller into Bloomberg surveillance. This is Doug in Florida. <laughs> oh, Doug, my Lord, good morning. Doug, yes. <laughs> Doug, a question for Mr. Gartman, Gartman's favorite fan. Uh, hey, Dougie, how are you, buddy? Doug, a question for Mr. Gartman, please. Oh, the question I just asked um, on Twitter. Um, what did I ask? Oh, yes. Uh, talk amongst yourselves. Answer the following <laughs> question. Um, in March of 2009, I felt that the equity market, the S&P, was making a generational bottom, as you know. Um, back in June or early July of 2016, I made the case that bond yields are making a generational low. Your thoughts? I think the next generational low is, uh, first of all, congratulations, Doug. I mean, and you have been hammering those points home for years and years, and you've been absolutely right, so well done. I think if we're asking where's the next generational low going to be, I think the next generational low is going to be in the commodity markets. I think things are unbelievably, scathingly, and incompre- incomprehensibly cheap. At this point, uh, the, the the generational trend in the bond market is likely to continue to go. Rates are continuing to go lower, and prices are going yeah. to continue to go higher. And the generational low in the stock market that's going to continue to move from from the lower left to the upper right until it stops. But if we're looking yeah. for another generational low for something that's inexpensive commodities. Yeah. Doug Cass, uh, Dennis Garvin's idea of long term is three days. We all know that. Three hours. Three hours. Three hours. As well. Doug, you have set the bar this year for a discussion of the most owned Amazon. And you've had the courage to go out with a five year view or even longer. Justify what Mr. Bezos is doing right now. Yeah, I have a a price target basically around $5,000 looking out five years from now. And. Um, I was initially concerned, and what kept me from Amazon 
Sir Thomas and Dennis was uh, for some time until December of 2018 when the stock was trading around $1,350 um, was that I was concerned about um, regulatory interference. They're making all these um, you know, horizontal um, uh, vertical acquisitions within retail industry and across other industry lines and I thought there would be severe antitrust problems. And I've come to the conclusion that the uh, regulatory headwinds are n not nearly as concerning as I thought. Indeed, uh, regulations might even deepen the company's moat or franchise value as uh, less capitalized companies without the financial resources of Amazon and Bezos will be ill-equipped um, 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 to, to comply with new regulations. So I think Amazon, obviously the early and first adopter to the concept of buying on the Internet, uh, has a much, much larger runway than most investors expect. Dennis, tell us about long-term investment. I mean, you've got trades, and your gold trade has been brilliant. What do you got, like 15% on that all along? Way more than that. Yeah, way, way more excuse than me. That. But, I've, had, I've had it on for five years, so. Okay, but, but tell us about how you do long-term investment like Cass is doing in Amazon right now. I wish I had the intellect that Doug has because... Well, you don't. Either do I. And, uh, no, nobody does. Plus, you don't have his golf game. But he's actually, uh, mine was actually better than his for a while, but my, mine's deteriorating. His is getting better. And, and as I, I, I gave Doug as, one of the, As David Bowie said, ch 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 changes. <laughs> and soft forearms, right? So, I know, you told me. That's how I won all the tournaments this year. Uh, so, soft uh, arms. Soft Dennis, I got, I got 40 seconds left. Tell me how you do long-term long investment. I, I, basically, the first thing I look at is what's the chart telling me? Is it going from the lower left to the upper right? Is the new highs coming? Are, are, have new, have, have, the yeah. lower, have lows been consistently higher? I want to look at, first of all, fundam technically, is something telling me I'm to be bullish? Then I'll go find the fundamentals, which is a, contrary to what most people are taught. I'll go find the fundamentals that keep me involved with that long-term yeah. long trend. But again, I want to hammer, hammer home the idea. If you're looking for the next uh, generational low, look at look at owning commodity prices, period, okay. end of discussion. Red wheat's in there as well. <laughs> red wheat, hard red winter wheat. This has been wonderful. Dennis Gartman, <laughs> thank you so much. The Gartman letter. Doug Cass, thank you for joining us this morning. Cass, smarter than we are, it's warmer in Florida. Yes. These are Seabreeze partners. What are we doing, Tom? Of course. Paul, what do you see there? I mean, you know, again, it's see, the a little end lift of the year, to the market, like Tom. lift. Yeah, a little I mean, lift to the market. About, we, you, know. It, it, you know, we see this every day. It just kind of lifts a little bit uh, every day, and uh, in the absence of any yeah. news, this thing drifts higher. You didn't tell uh, Dennis I'm in the triple leverage cash fund, did you? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that didn't work. Well. It's worked but out well. Well at night. <laughs> it's worked out well this year. Yields are higher, 1.93 percent on the 10-year uh, yield. Paul Serini and Tom King, stay with us. This is Bloomberg. National headlines right now with John Tucker. John. Yeah, Paul and Tom, House Democrats Adam Schiff of California and Judiciary Chairman Gerald Nadler likely to take leading roles in presenting the House impeachment case to the Senate. But House Speaker Nancy Pelosi will designate other Democrats to play various parts of the House impeachment team during the impeachment of President Clinton in 1998. Thirteen Republicans from the House Judiciary Committee were appointed as impeachment managers. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and other Senate Republicans prefer a short trial lasting perhaps two weeks with no new testimony that will present fewer opportunities for political damage. President Trump, however, has expressed his preference for a longer trial in which his lawyers could bring in witnesses and go on the offensive against his Democratic critics. And one day after impeaching the president, the Democratic-led House expected to overwhelmingly pass one of his signature priorities, a bill implementing terms of the United States-Mexico-Canada agreement expected to pass today with bipartisan support. Global News, 24 hours a day on air and on Quick Take by...
TNC and privacy terms can be found at bevel.com slash terms. Please don't text and drive. Have you wanted to speak a new language, but you thought it'd be too hard or take too much time? Then try Babbel for free by texting EXPLORE to 64000. In just 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to speaking a new language in just a few weeks. And right now, you can try Babbel for free. Babbel starts out teaching you words and phrases by matching them with pictures. You won't believe how easy the interactive program is. Soon the sentences get a little bigger, and before you know it, you're having simulated conversations voiced by native speakers. And because Babbel is crafted by language experts and uses the spaced repetition method, in just 10 to 15 minutes a day, you'll be speaking the language of your choice with real confidence. With Babbel, you can speak a language. Just text EXPLORE to 64000 and start your first lesson in the language of your choice for free. Download the Babbel app or text EXPLORE to 64000 and try it for free. Text E-X-P-L-O-R-E to 64000. Why has J.D. Power ranked Commonwealth Financial Network number one in independent advisor satisfaction among financial investment firms for the sixth straight time? We think it comes down to one thing. You. Because it's your input and feedback that keeps us focused on what's most important to you and your clients and continually pushes us to be the best we can be. Maybe that's why we receive top marks in every category of the J.D. Power 2019 Advisor Satisfaction Survey. They named us number one in client support, number one in firm leadership, number one in operational support, number one in compensation, number one in professional development support, and number one in technology support. Ready to partner with the best? Call Commonwealth at 866-462-3638 or visit Commonwealth.com and feel the power. Member FINRA SIPC, a registered investment advisor. For 2019 J.D. Power Award information, visit jdpower.com slash awards. This is a Bloomberg Pursuits look at... Ho, 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 who's made a list this year? I want a new phone, one with amazing cameras, ultra-wide lens, of course, live focus video. Well, it has to be 5G ready to stream all my films. Can it come with something awesome to listen to them through? Darling, I think he was talking to the kids. Get everything you want and more. Purchase a Samsung 5G ready device and claim a pair of silver wireless Galaxy Buds at no extra cost. Shop our 5G handsets in store or online at your local O2 store or o2.co.uk. 18 plus. Offer excludes Galaxy Fold 5G. Purchased by the 25th of the 12th, 19. Claim from Samsung within 30 days. T's and C's apply. There's no way I'm sanding these floorboards by hand. Want to power through your timber projects? Head to the B&Q Tool Shop. Get hands-on in store with our wide range of electric sanders and planers, including the McAllister Random Orbit Sander, for just £30. The B&Q Tool Shop. You can do it when you are being q it. He leaps and he surges in, touchdown! It is college football bowl season on TuneIn. This Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern time, the bowl season kicks off from the beautiful Bahamas. Back to throw, fires, run of the slam, caught, touchdown! The Charlotte 49ers will be playing their first bowl game in school history. They'll be matched up against the Buffalo Bulls. Don't miss the first bowl game of the season. To listen to this and every bowl game, just search college football today. Right now, instead of hearing this, you could be listening to the music that keeps you moving with TuneIn Premium. Find today's biggest songs and all of your favorites commercial-free. Visit TuneIn.com slash premium to upgrade. Want to hear about the latest and greatest things to listen to on TuneIn? For reminders of the biggest live sports games, debates, and breaking news stories, follow at TuneIn on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay connected with the audio that matters to you. In case you didn't know, TuneIn lets you listen to the same radio stations you pick up on your home or car radio, except you can hear them from anywhere. If you want to find a station from somewhere else in the world, navigate to the By Location section under Browse. Keep exploring with TuneIn. Introducing a new podcast, ESPN Daily. When you want to go beyond your feed, when you want to get inside the score, when you want to get behind the highlight, there's ESPN Daily. Go deeper into the stories of the moment. Get the exclusive access and insider perspective that only ESPN can give you. ESPN Daily, hosted by me, Mina Kimes. Listen now to ESPN Daily on TuneIn. Hours a day, on air and at TikTok on Twitter. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in over 100... 20 countries. This is Bloomberg Radio. Now, a global news update. 
The start date for the impeachment trial of President Trump is up in the air. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi refused to say when she'll send impeachment articles to the Senate. The White House says President Trump was riffing when at last night's campaign rally he took a swipe at the late Democratic Representative John Dingell. In Michigan, President Trump going after Debbie Dingell, who voted for impeachment, relating a story that when her husband died, he ordered flags lowered. He's looking down. He'd be still, maybe he's looking up. I don't know. Debbie Dingell, who was elected to replace her husband, is defending his legacy against the suggestion of where he ended up. John Dingell earned his burial at Arlington Cemetery because he's a World War II veteran. Bob Costantini, Washington. A section of Interstate 80 remains closed in central Pennsylvania hours after a multi-vehicle wreck in snow squalls left two people dead and dozens injured. Closed for a time, some 34 miles of interstate. I'm John Trout. Interconnect here. Let's start with the national security implications of this. Balance of Power with David Weston. What could the United States do to help? Weekdays at noon Eastern on Bloomberg Radio. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. And I'm Karen Moscow, and this update brought to you by Portfolio Analysts, powered by Interactive Brokers. Savvy investors use Portfolio Analysts to create a consolidated view of their finances and check the health of their complete financial portfolio. Sign up for free at PortfolioAnalyst.com. And U.S. stocks are edging toward fresh records as investors chase gains that have added more than $5 trillion to valuations this year. Government bonds falling around the world as a string of central banks kept their interest rates steady, while one raised its Benchmark. And we check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day on Bloomberg. And it looks like the S&P 500 is at a record up to tenths of a percent or four points at 3195. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is also at a record. It's up to tenths percent or 55 points at 28,200. And the NASDAQ is up to chance percent or 16 points at 88.43, also at a record. Ten-year Treasury down 4.30 seconds, yield 1.93%. Yield on the two-year, 1.62%. NYMEX crude oil up a tenth of a percent or 7 cents at $61 a barrel. COMEX gold up a tenth of a percent of a dollar fifty at 14.80.30 an ounce. The euro, 1.1120 against the dollar. The yen, 109.33. Watching shares of Rite Aid this morning up 35. This after third quarter profit and its outlook for the year beat analyst estimates. And that's a Bloomberg Business Flash. Tom and Paul. Karen, thanks so much. Uh, I'm 58 points right now. We welcome all of you worldwide. We welcome with great sympathy all of you, the 2.7 million taking the CFA exam in June of 2020 <laughs> as well. Stunning. Uh, let, let me explain this. Full disclosure, CFA Institute has been a huge supporter of what I do here at Bloomberg. Uh, I am a member of the CFA uh, Institute, and I used to slide rule, Mary. <laughs> That's how far back it goes. An annual visit with Margaret Fitzgerald, uh, Franklin rather, Margaret Franklin of CFA, their president and CEO, and we welcome her here today to talk about the future of Wall Street and what the CFA Institute's doing. None of that matters. You grew up with Frank Mahovlich. I mean, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah. In Toronto, he was one of our heroes. He was, this is folks in hockey, when one player could change the game, and Frank Mahovlich would sit in the center of the ice in the offensive zone, and no one could touch him. His was, dad sharpened our skates at Lee Side Memorial Gardens. <laughs> there were six teams. This is back when it was real hockey, mm-hmm. and and they were, as you mentioned before, they were. Da- it was a down to earth thing. It wasn't people making eight or fifteen million dollars yep. a year. Yeah, it, it was, was a really real thing. basic. It was a real thing. Let's let's talk about CFA and start in Toronto. International organization. You are focused on CFA Toronto now, in charge of all of the worldwide platform. How are you adapting to the international nature so, of what started out in Charlottesville, Virginia? So let me just say I'm actually in Charlottesville. Sure, we have of nine offices around the world. Toronto is a society, so I'm Canadian, uh, but now the global CEO. And um, I would say my roots in Toronto, actually probably the most multicultural city in the world. Uh, we have we have a large contingent of Chinese passport holders taking the exams and elsewhere from around the world in Toronto, as is the case in many Canadian cities. Um, 
And when I wrote my exam, it was not as global. It wasn't even close to being global the way it is right now. How have you adapted the exam to the new mathiness of global Wall Street? It used to be, my son played lacrosse with your son. Do you have an intern program? I mean, that used to be how it (laughs) went. And now it's about intellectual chops. How have you adapted that 10 years on? So the CFA program has really two elements to it that keep it current and on point. The first is the practice analysis. That's where we go out to practitioners and make sure that what's in the curriculum is relevant for, call it, the just qualified candidate. The other aspect of that is we get a lot of material that then informs our professional learning. So once you've got your charter, what is the thought leadership, the skills, uh, knowledge, and capabilities that you need? So that practice analysis is a critical component, not only of curriculum, but also of our lifelong learning. So Margaret, you're the first uh, female CEO of the CFA Institute. Talk to us a little bit about the diversity that you see in the folks taking the CFA globally now nowadays. So uh, I am the first... Female CEO in its 73 year history. Um, Our industry suffers from a lack of diversity. We are seeing the numbers change. So, for instance, China is 50% women in the candidate program. Um, But but frankly, uh, I got my charter in 1997. At that point, 19% of the charter holders were women, and it's or 18%, it's now 19% um, over 20 years later. So uh, five years ago, myself and Leah Bennett, uh, who's a board member, started the Women in Investment Management Initiative, which CFA Institute backed. Five years ago, we had to present the evidence that actually having diverse teams and including women, uh, which is the universal diversity issue, would improve risk and return. And What did you uh, learn? Um, really, that, that the core tenet of portfolio diversification never made it into team construction. Um, What I would say is five years later, we don't have to push evidence. We now see an energy and intensity by employers for tools and strategies that will help them attract necessary and critical um, talent to make the best teams that they can. Well, and I'm thrilled to announce, folks, my year-end program this year with Goldman Sachs is Abby Joseph Cohen. Take Abby Joseph Cohen, who was a pioneer as an economist and with her prodigious financial skills, writing in the FAJ journal as well, or someone like Sally Krawcheck at Stanford Bernstein as well. These are people that were pioneers. They had prodigious intellectual chops. Why are we floating at 19% on females within the CFA Institute? That stuns me. So... The, I think some of the language we use doesn't attract the right type of people. So when we use quant language and very mathematical language, it sometimes doesn't appeal to the values and the core of what we do is developing portfolios to solve yeah, but, problems but, for investors. But, but women in finance have prodigious math abilities. I, I believe Ann Richards will join me in yep. Davos with Fidelity International. Now. I mean, she's first rate mathematical skills. Why can't we jumpstart ourselves away from that mathiness stereotype for women, including my daughters? So I think actually right now that's exactly what that's exactly what we're doing. And I will say there's an intensity and intention by employers around attracting women. And that actually will take some time to make it through um, the pipe. Uh, But we really see something quite uh, different. I, I might note that Oftentimes, when it gets to trust and judgment, when you move up through the ranks, uh, you tend to gravitate to those who look like you. And so it's critically important that we have women in those senior leadership roles, because if I can see it, I can imagine it, visibility is validity. So, Margaret, Tom and I, we speak to a lot of fund managers here in a surveillance studio. What we're hearing more and more about is ESG, environmental sustainability and governance, factoring into their investment process more and more. How is that How are you incorporating that into the CFA curriculum? So we've actually had it in the curriculum for about the last five years. Of course, it's increasing in importance. So when we talk to practitioners and we do that practice analysis, it really comes up. What an observation is that in particular, the U.S. has 